The opinions and comments expressed by members of our panel do not necessarily represent that of this station or our sponsor. From the John DeVitter Recording Studio, located in an undisclosed and clandestine location on the great northwest side of our fair city of Chicago, we once again are pleased to be presenting yet another edition of our monthly roundtable panel discussion show, Meet the Chicago Historians. Today we present our June edition, recorded for posterity on the 17th day of June, in the year of our Lord, 2013. Now, here he is, everybody's favorite electronics troubleshooter and jack of all trades, John DeVitta. Thank you, Rich. From the John DeVitta Broadcast Center, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another broadcast of Meet the Chicago Historians on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, June 17th, the year 2013. Today's panel will be talking about the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. So sit back and enjoy. Meet the Chicago Historians. And now to start today's broadcast, here is our announcer, Richard Lang. Now here's our panel moderator, Jack Red Ryan. Hi, gang. <laughs> Once again, <laughs> our favorite day of the month has come along. It's uh, just about officially summer now. I think it comes in Friday. summer solstice on the 20th this time. You're in Friday. about 7 or 8 Friday, nine, time, 9 o'clock because that, uh, that uh, Nature Museum down in Lincoln Park, they're going to have a special summer solstice thing. I think it looks like, like sacrifice someone. <laughs> or, or well, the was in, I had a whole bunch of notes for what was going on in the other museums. <laughs> and left the in world the safe for pagans. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're doing a pretty good job of that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but uh, uh, yes, it is. It's almost summer, and it, it feels like it outside. And God bless it. It's about time. Uh, this morning, let's let's go. Um, first of all, we have a couple of guests with us. Uh, Commissioner Frank Avila from the water reclamation, the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. Is that the whole title? Uh, yes, that's the title. Metro that right? Yeah, Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. I, you know, I do not like that name. Uh, they should have kept it the old name. Met sanitary District. Metropolitan right. Sanitary District. Yeah. Same because thing. Same thing, but at least they know what we do. When I mention the <laughs> Water Reclamation District, they think we're the uh, uh, water filtration plant out of Navy Pier. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's not us. That's the top end. That's drinking water. Right. We're the bottom end. We treat poop and pee. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they, they think you got a lot of technicians walking around with divining yeah, rods right, looking right. at wells or yeah. something. So, I, you know, I, instead of that name, I think they should uh, use Metropolitan Poop and Pee Treatment of Cook County. Maybe that's how we should have named it. And everyone <laughs> would know what we do. Yeah. Very good. And, uh, but you know what? No one would ever shake your hand or anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, or accept your business card. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> well, the, well they can always, always wash your hands. Yeah. You know, well, yeah, I'll, I'll carry some. Uh, carry some uh, wipes with. Wipes, yeah. 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 Wipes your hands with. Yeah. I mean, it makes me think it was one Laurel and Hardy short where it, they're in business together. It says, uh, Stan, Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy, uh, purveyors of uh, high class fertilizer it was you know <laughs> and so Ollie's looking for Stan and Stan comes into the room he's got a fly swatter he says where have you been he's in the stock room so <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, in the 30s so. yeah. anyway that just makes me think of that so and next to you is this lady and um, this is your missus correct you know, that's your husband yes and your name is ma'am Sherry Sherry Avila. Sherry Avila okay and you you don't, you don't work for the district do you no. But what do you work for? I am a docent at the Irish American Heritage Center. What now? The Irish American Heritage Center. Which is located? 4626, I believe, or something like that, North Knox. I it's know. off of Cicero mm -hmm. and uh, Wilson, Wilson, Wilson and Wilson. Knox. Okay, yeah, and this is... finding it, yeah. And how would you define it? Is it a museum or is it a, uh, like a community center or a combination of those it's things? It's a combination of a lot of different things because uh, on the second floor is the arts center and they not only have a museum 
but they have a library that almost covers half the floor. And they also have an art gallery on the second floor. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's quite uh, an interesting place to go to. An awful lot of literature, and English literature, was written by Irishmen. I know that for sure. Like you look back on, Bram Stoker was born in Dublin. I find out <laughs> Dracula. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. But he may not have been Irish. But he was he was a theater manager or something. Or oh, or James or Joyce. James Joyce. Yeah, yeah. you know, and and they just had a conference uh, about uh, Dra Dracula and the author mm -hmm. uh, here in Chicago mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Sherry and I went to, and yeah. and and they love his writings. Yeah, he yeah. was. Uh, he was not the first, but he was the most popular of the bunch that did that. And uh, Dracula has been around for centuries mm. yeah. prior to at least in some kind of incarnation. And he did a masculine job of uh, presenting it as a format for storytelling and everything else. Yes, yes. He does it like a diary, day by day, I know. I don't, I never read his book. I just read yeah. it. I looked at his movies. I got the classic comic of it, so. <laughs> oh, oh, I, thought you might had, I thought you might have had the footnotes. <laughs> That's almost as good as the footnotes, yeah. <laughs> I skipped those. Yeah. <laughs> Not enough pictures. But anyway, uh, so uh, is, your, is your center, is it open year-round? or? Yes, it's open year-round. Not just in March, then. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> in fact, we have a, um, an Irish fest coming up shortly. What is uh, that? July... Around 13 and 14 on the weekend. Hmm. And actually, the Irish singers will be singing at that well, Irish well, I'm fest. I tell my family. Now, is that, uh, is that uh, indoors, outdoors, or what's in well, It's both, actually, during the summer. Mm -hmm. It's both in and uh, outdoors. Uh, there's a tent outdoors, okay. and there's yeah. bands, yeah. all kinds of bands How that come you? in. Yeah. Uh, just to give you an idea of the magnitude of that, it's 86,000 square feet, and it's four stories. It used to be Mayfair Junior College, but it was also an administrative facility of the uh, Chicago Board of Education before it went into disrepair. Mm -hmm. At one point, kids were roller skating down the halls and the windows were all broken and there was graffiti all over the walls. Uh, but then the uh, Irish Fellowship Club stepped in and decided they wanted to purchase it. And so they put down $501,000 to purchase this 86,000 square feet uh, building. Gee, I've seen a lot of, of uh, open schools that were operating that had <laughs> no windows. <laughs> <graffiti. It's laughs> worse than skating down the hallway, though. But uh, Yeah, you've, you've got to take care of that graffiti one of these days. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. No, and, and, and also, <laughs> Sherry sings with the Irish Singers. Mm -hmm. And Sherry sings so good Ooh. that Ooh, I, I booked good. her for my wake. Wow. <laughs> Sherry gave me a good price. Yeah. She gave me a price. Yeah. Now, uh, do, do you have a website? This is the uh, thing, too. There is a website. I believe it's IAHC.org. Yes, IrishAmericanHeritageCenter.org. If they just Google Irish American Heritage Center, they'll yes, tell yes, yes, definitely so if they Google it. And, and, and then you're self-supporting memberships, or is that available? There is a membership available, a yearly membership, and that allows you to vote for the board. Uh, and also, uh, it gives you discounts in the bar uh, and uh -oh. other. <laughs> Can I have a bar too? <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, <huh? laughs> it's a good idea to sort of check out what all those discounts are, so you don't forget about them. Do you serve Guinness? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> yeah, well, so many bars in that building. I, I think almost every room ha has a bar. <laughs> well, for sure, every floor has a bar. <laughs> The room. Somebody said they had six bars. Do you have a recuperation room, too? <laughs> <laughs> now, the top floor is the Aaron room, and the interesting thing about that is they converted it from a what I call an ugly school gym to a ballroom oh, ball with really? chandeliers and, of course, a big bar. <laughs> Strictly lace curtain, then. <laughs> <laughs> lace curtain. <laughs> <laughs> and the interesting part about that is that the $500,000 to convert that or remodel that came from the Irish government. Oh, wow. That's, That's interesting. interesting. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're in disrepair now, the Irish government. They're in all kinds of problems. Yes. Oh, they're not yes, getting yes. that some ki same kind of money anymore. <laughs> uh -huh. But that was when they were doing good. The tiger. No, that yeah. makes me think of uh, a story about how do you confuse an Irishman? <laughs> Stan... I can say this now. My <laughs> father was Irish, mother was German, so uh, you stand three shovels against the wall and told him to take his pick. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Tommy Makem said in one of those. Tommy Makem, excellent singer. The Clancy Brothers. Oh, okay. dot org. Okay, thank That's you. The thank you. So. Yeah. It, so it has changed over the years to mm -hmm. the website uh, address. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you know, uh, uh, I'm um, Mexican American, mm -hmm. but every Tuesday night I go dance Irish dancing. Mm -hmm. uh, Caleb and said dancing. Did you ever hear of the, the Brigade de San Patricio? Oh, yes, yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yes. Can we tell the folks what we're talking about? Oh, yes, oh, yes. yes. Uh, we we, uh, we uh, did two shows on the Irish, uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the Irishmen that they, they, they came over, they came on the United States, were fighting the Mexican American War, they were on the United States side, and they were fighting the Catholics. On the Mexicans were Catholic, and they didn't want to fight the Catholic, so they went over on the Mexican side. There, mm. and that a long time time ago. It reminds mm. me of the uh, Roman Empire. Uh, they used to hire Germans <laughs> for mercenaries. Yes. And depending on who had the money, got, got mm. the help. <laughs> That's what a mercenary is, right? Yeah. I, I just want to mention that tomorrow night, Tuesday. I don't know if this is coming on before that. Probably. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tuesday the 18th. Every once a month yeah. uh, on a Tuesday at 7 o'clock, they have something called Celtic Women. And the, uh, the one for June 18th is going to be on Northern Ireland. Mm -hmm. uh. And it's going to be a professor from DePaul University coming in to speak about that. Mm -hmm. So we do have uh, interesting speakers, uh, very well qualified speakers that come in and talk about different topics uh, that are relevant to the Celtic culture as well as the... Um, Irish culture. So you really you touch all the bases. It sounds like. Yes, you know, definitely. Uh, music and culture. Well, and, uh, for example, we had a talk, uh, a movie, a documentary that was about the uh, Jewish culture, mm -hmm. uh, Jewish immigrants that came into Dublin mm -hmm. during World War II, and established their own community there. Very few people knew or know that there was a community of mm -hmm. Jewish people that uh, uh, were immigrating from uh, World War II. Well, in the 50s we had uh, Mayor Briscoe, the yes. Lord, yes. Lord yeah. Mayor yeah. of Dublin, and yes. Yes. Yeah. a Jew. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 And vice versa, in Mexico, mm -hmm. there was a President, President Fox, Fox who was Irish. Irish. Yeah. 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 So well, the we Irish are, are in politics. I, I didn't realize the Irish were in politics. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, 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 big, a big surprise <laughs> to me, <laughs> Jack. Well, well, there you go, right? <laughs> <laughs> the, the history, the history of uh, Chicago is interesting in that fact too, because they used to have churches, or Irish churches, Catholic, you know, yeah. Polish churches, yeah, well, they, they and you cannot change. You had to have an Irish priest for an Irish church. And you had to have a Polish <laughs> priest for a Polish yeah. church. And one time, the archdiocese decided to go. And I think it was an Irish priest in a Polish church, and everybody walked out. <laughs> <laughs> within like, within a, a mile in any direction of Forty Seventh Nations, like. Seven different Catholic parishes right around, you know, right nearby. Yeah. yeah. But on, on Archer, Archer and Pershing, there was right next, right next door to each other. The churches where it was St. Agnes. I can't think of the other one. Right. There yeah. one was, uh, <laughs> one was I guess Bohemian. One was Polish or something. They had that one. <laughs> now since then they merged it. Yeah. Partly. Yeah. yeah one was uh, it's sort of a Belgian or a, a French. Uh, was connection, it? yeah, Saint, Saint and a French connection. French oh. connection, how about that? <laughs> but they had two names. Yeah, they had three hmm. three churches within two blocks of each yeah, other. French. Yeah, the Belgians. Yeah, I, I I remember when the Belgians used to run the janitorial unions. Yeah. Remember? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every budget that came over, they, they had a job with the, <laughs> as a janitor, and they end, end up owning the apartment buildings. Oh, <laughs> how about that? Well, that's a, that's a, I've never heard that one before. <laughs> But mm. my favorite place is the Fifth <laughs> Province, because the Fifth Province, do you know where the Fifth Province is? No, what is that? Well, there's actually only four provinces in Ireland. The Fifth Province is that place neither here nor there, neither east nor west, neither north nor south. Oh. It is that place within our hearts that opens up to receive other people in. Mm. And that was a quote by... Uh, President of Ireland, Mary Robinson, and uh, so the Fifth Province is very special in my uh, province. Camp. Yes, right. Fifth Province. Yeah, yeah, like you have Ulster. What are they? Leinster. What, what's what's the north? Connaught is. Uh, uh, Ulster is the north one. North, yeah, okay. Connaught. Connaught is one, and 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 Leinster, Ulster, Leinster, and Connaught. I don't know what the fourth one. Is. Mm. The only thing I know is if you're Catholic and you go up north, they frown upon you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not really religion. It's 
politics because yeah, well, Protestants and Catholics. It is complicated. Yes, that's what it is. It, yeah, it's not quite so simple as say your Catholic. No, no. <laughs> and I was arguing it broke, the, uh, it broke yeah. down that way, though. But then you also got the Protestant Scots, which yeah. are Celts. Yeah. So it gets to be. Yeah, they're Celt, yeah. Then you got a few Frenchmen that are Celts, too, but they're sort right. of disappeared. Is right, actually, in Spaniard, yeah, yeah. Uh, were yeah, you Spaniard? aware that yeah. there were, they found a Celtic mummy in mm. China, Western China, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a Scottish DNA, and he was like six foot something tall, and with his Celtic, you know, outfit on, uh, and so, and also there have been Celtic artifacts found in India, Macedonia and in general in the Middle East. Well, so the Celts have been <laughs> around, but they were mercenaries and they were also uh, tradesmen and so uh, they they traveled. <laughs> well, the Chinese traveled a lot too. Prior to Columbus they had uh, ships all over the world. They found relics of the Chinese in South America and the mm. new emperor came in and he decided he didn't like that anymore so he destroyed all the ships and all <laughs> And almost all the maps. Oh Did you leave that my junk? God. Did you leave that junk, really? <laughs> 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 oh, God, I call it. Uh, 1451, I believe it is. I, I thought the Vikings were, were, were the ones that traveled throughout the world. The Vikings. Well, uh, uh, Dublin was a Viking city at one oh, yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Yeah, well, that, uh, they had the Iceland and Greenland and yeah. then uh, North America to some degree. And that's yeah. all has been disputed, but that's... Yeah, they found remnants of oh, the they, uh, they yeah, yeah. About yeah. yeah. The province of Brittany in France yes. uh, was settled by Celts. Yes. Yeah. And we, we talk about Great Britain because Brittany was Little Britain. If there's a Great mm -hmm. Britain, there has to be a Little yes. Britain. It was, yeah. the, it was the province of Brittany. Mm -hmm. It was called Little Britain in medieval times. There's even a Celtic settlement in Spain, Asturias. Yeah. And yeah, Asturias. Uh, forget the other one two little uh, areas in uh, Spain in the western usually it's the western part of these countries the crown prince of Spain has the title prince of the Asturias it's, it's the equivalent of being the prince of Wales mm -hmm. in Britain prince wow. of the Asturias interesting and if yeah. you notice folks we are saying Celts the proper pronunciation yeah unlike that basketball team in the east <laughs> <laughs> oh you mean the okay. celtics, <laughs> celtics yeah. Yeah, and, and you know sherry did a dna on on me she <laughs> went to this uh genealogy. ancestry DNA. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, explain sherry what, what, what uh well uh well it, it's a saliva regular saliva dna but it's ancestry we did both we did genographic and we did ancestry mm. and actually uh Mine was done through National Geographic, and they couldn't work fast enough through Ancestry.com, so, but he got his through Ancestry.com. It's a little different, though, because when you go through Ancestry.com, the goal is to connect you with other people, and we actually have pages <laughs> oh. of people who think they're related in some way. But the interesting part is that he's 14% Scandinavian. Mm. The Very Vikings, good. maybe. Oh. Sure. Yeah, couldn't find the Vikings. They got around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, right? and, and maybe all the Irishmen in Dublin are Vikings. Uh, oh. yeah, I don't know. That's a, the that's first a fight you got to go into because the Vikings uh, invaded uh, Germany and all of, a lot of the Baltic areas too. So they got around. Well, there was water; they could go. Yeah, yeah. 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 coastal city. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Um, I'm interesting, you mentioned Ancestry.com. My daughter Michelle and I have a daughter Jennifer. Better mention both of them. But Michelle went on the um, Ancestry.com to look our families up. Now, my mother-in-law, my wife's from Western Kentucky, mother-in-law's maiden name was Wilson, married name was Jones. But she used to talk about the um, Calvert family all the time. Calvert, we're related to the king, Calvert. I said, Calvert, <laughs> that's the founding family of Maryland. Yeah. The, the oldest, the oldest uh, uh, Calvert, Lord Baltimore, right? Yeah. Well, as it turns out, they're all direct descendants of them. Hmm. So I, I call her my wife, Lady Baltimore. Now <laughs> <laughs> it's well, true. Well, the same thing is a problem with uh, Lord Baltimore, not the Lord Brunswick of England. They changed his name because it was from Germany, and he was a German who migrated to, to uh, England, and consequently it got to be a little bit of a tiff there because the royal family really descends through Prince Albert through Germany. Mm -hmm. So it gets to be a real 
House of Saxe Coburg. Yeah, yeah right. right. Gotha. Now yeah. call, they call themselves Windsor. House of Windsor. They changed it in 1917. Yeah. 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 Uh, that recently, During really. the war. During, yeah. the, during the First World War. But it made a big war. deal, didn't it? Just yeah. changed that name. Yeah. Right? It was well, it's just like something like that. King George, I think it was the sixth. His real name is Albert. And Winston Churchill says Brilliant. it sounds too Titanic, and they wanted to change it to George. <laughs> <laughs> so his name was Bertie as a nickname. Yeah. Yeah. He, a movie out on him. He, he took the name George more to honor his father. He wanted right. to, he, because his, his, the Duke of Windsor, Edward, tried to be the exact opposite of his father. There was a bad, there was a bad relationship between George V and the, and the man who became the Duke that of Windsor. That was Edward that abdicated. And he was known as David, you know. That's his, right. He was known as David when the family. But uh, when, when, when the brother became king, he wanted to make it clear that he was going to carry on the traditions of his dad and that he didn't have this hostility. So that's why he took the name of George. Also, the, the Albert name didn't, uh, a lot of people didn't like because they were at odds with Germany at the time. Yes, it's called World War One, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, <laughs> World War, World War II. Two. Yeah. yeah, well, World War One, they. Not they uh, between the wars. Well, that, uh, that was a fight of cousins. So I'm just going to say they were all related. They were all uh, uh, right. cousins. Cousins. Uh, son, son Queen, Queen, Queen Victoria had all her yeah. uh, her yeah. children married. George the Russian. Kaiser, the Tsar, and the King yeah. of England were all cousins. We're all cousins. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I think they even got further along than that. I think yeah, someone was in Scandinavia too. Was yeah. uh, the yeah. Danish royal family? Danish royal, Danish royal family. family was intermarried yeah. with. Yeah. It, 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 I, I picked up a book one time and it showed. Uh, um, you know, the you know, relationships, and yeah. and you can see somebody saying, "Hey, this is a pretty good uh, deal here." You know, you're the king or the queen, and uh, Edward, the, King Edward the Seventh, his wife Alexandra, was the sister of Marie, who was the Tsarina of Russia, the the, the mother of Tsar Nicholas. If you've ever seen the movie uh, Anastasia, yeah. you know, yes, the, yes, the, uh, yes. the Dowager Empress, you know, played yeah. by Helen Hayes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That the, re the real Dowager Empress was the sister of the Queen of England. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a fascinating movie, by the way. Oh, yeah. just mainly, a couple, a few days yeah. Yeah. mainly because of the acting, but uh, I don't, you know, I don't think it was, uh, you know, historically true. No, it's not right. Historically. No. right. No, right. The history of the royalty of uh, Europe in general is sort of interesting because it's the interrelationships yeah. over the centuries. And uh, they always say, well, you're related to King so-and-so. Well, he had a lot of bastard children that were in the <laughs> Well, because, because of the, the, the fact that they were sisters, then each of their sons, George V, who was the son of Edward VII, and Nicholas of Nicholas and Alexandra, they were first cousins. Yeah. They spent so much alike. Yeah, that's probably why uh, you know their son was a hemophiliac or something. You right. Know. right. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a hereditary disease. But yeah, Victoria uh, was the carrier. Hemophiliacs. Catherine the Great. Yeah, they a bleeder. Yeah. Was a bleeder. Yeah. Yeah. was yeah. Episcopalian. Yeah. Uh, on just uh, on Sundays. Well, oh. Catherine the Great of uh, Russia was uh, Austrian. Not, no, she was German. German. She was German. German. Yeah. You know, this is, this is a great topic Holstein. for Chicago uh, historians. <laughs> <laughs> in, in the beginning, we just like to we warm up, though. You never know where we're going. Is, that, is yeah. this a warm up? Are we in, are we, <laughs> I think we're in about the seventh inning. We're in the bullpen right, right. now. No, no, <laughs> we, we can get a little, few more minutes out of this. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of, though, the, the, uh, let's, let's, let's finish uh, introducing a really regular people. Next up, oh. we've got. Rich Lang. I'm Rich Lang, your announcer and a longtime student of Chicago history, as taught by our next panelist, Ken Little. And I have to say, I was at the Irish American Center twice already this year. I had my 80th birthday there. Oh, God bless you. Yes, and we were in uh, one of the rooms, um, well, we were opposite the room with the fireplace. That's a really nice... Uh, oh, the Fifth Province. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Did it have a bar in there? Uh, no, but th as I said, I no, the bar was across the hallway. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah that's the fifth province. Yeah, and then uh, I was up there for, um, they, uh, on, uh, I guess during Lent, they had uh, fish fries on Friday. Yeah. Yes. So I, I attended one of those, and uh, they had quite a, you know, uh, well, a lot of entertainment. And so it was... Uh, it was really, uh, you know, the food was good. Yeah, they ha they have some uh, good liquid food there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Metrical and stuff. Like <laughs> well, Smithix, uh, they 
uh, sponsored the hometown award at the tune of $10,000 at the Irish Hall of Fame. And uh, Josie O'Hara and her husband were the two uh, people who were the hometown award. Do you yeah. So $10,000 from Smithick, so <laughs> yeah. what can I say? Yeah. <laughs> also, I have to tell you, you know, I am Irish, all four of my grandparents were born in Ireland. Uh, my one daughter collects Balik. Uh, and but the what? Balik, uh, which is oh, um, uh, cup saucers, chinaware, oh. oh. but with the um, uh, the shamrock uh, design. You know, it's actually a basket weave, and I know there's quite a collection at yes. the Irish American yes. Center. Yes, yeah. there are over 700 pieces or something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, you know, it was from a Catholic priest too. Or some, some of it some was of them from, are from the Catholic priest, yeah. Father Kill. Yeah. You know what he did, I thought was interesting, when he would uh, baptize someone, he would give them a little shell that was made by Balik and uh, as a, a little memento, and those are, you know, yes. I, I don't know if they're rare or expensive, a but... 75 uh, millimeter shell or a uh, <laughs> <laughs> Very good, John. Sea shell, sea yeah, shell. Yeah, sea shell, how about Oh, I'm shell? sorry. Sea you know, it, it has a little <laughs> water in it. <laughs> See, they, they, I misunderstood. Yeah, they, no, you didn't. <laughs> anyway, that's all I wanted to Next say. Next up, John. I'm John Escachoco, and I'm glad to be here. I thought I would not be here. I had to stop for not one but two trains on, on, on uh, Harlem Avenue at, at Fullerton. Mm. But I finally made it here, and I'm glad to be with this fine group. And it's good to be with you a couple of days after Flag Day. Your background, Ooh, flag. I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I have a bachelor's and master's degree in history from DePaul, oh. and served in the Illinois legislature and was a state and was a town trustee and assessor in Cicero, oh. and do public speaking here and there. And he's a Superman fan. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Anybody see that new Superman movie? No, I don't yeah. plan yeah. to. <laughs> 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 they tampered with the costume. Yeah, right. the yeah. It's not the same costume. No, it's he's not. It's Superman is, that's, you know, that's tradition. On, you know? Yeah. He's got these leotard, but, you know. <laughs> anyway. Does he have a beard as Clark Kent? Something strange he's like growing, that? Yeah. He's, he's swaddling the earth when he's in, yeah. in his younger days. But uh, according to the comics, Superman's beard couldn't grow, so I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Plus he had a fake going there. I don't know. Everything always has to be rebooted. That's yeah. the big term now. Every yeah. every every form of entertainment, every yeah. everything we've known for years has to be changed around and rebooted. <laughs> That's no, like that gives them an opportunity to do it. I'd rather give them it a again. boot myself. Mm. Oh, the only thing I reboot is like my computer. But anyways. Next up. My name is yeah. Al Opitz. I'm president of the Austin Center Community Council. I'm a student of uh, Ken Little. And also, since I'm a ke engineer, chemical engineer, it's sort of oddball here. <laughs> you were an odd, oddball before you were a chemical <laughs> engineer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you, uh, chemical engineer is very important now. Yes, especially with, at the water reclamation. Yeah, with all these toxic chemicals oh, yeah. in, in our body. I mean, we, we need more chemical engineers. Well, the big problem is that uh, we've got to quit dumping medicines down the sewer. What do you do with them? Don't throw Well, the 25th yeah. district, of, uh, some of the police stations have mm. a uh, depository, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and you could deposit most of the stuff there. But again, the other problem is uh, this is Frank's domain. There is excess amount of medicines being taken and expelled by the body, which goes through the sewer system, which yeah. is not prop cannot be fully removed mm. along the way. So. Yeah, I just had an experience that way, you know, I was not doing too well, uh, you know, with the body functions, and they looked <laughs> down there, and there were two pills that had never dissolved. Never dissolved. Oh, never yeah. dissolved. So I told the doctor about it, and there isn't, you know, I'm chewing them now, <laughs> but... Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. They well, I, when you chew them. They, <laughs> I, I had a doctor told me, tell me that uh, he thought the majority of all vitamin pills went right through people. They really did not hmm. dissolve. So, and so he didn't. Uh, a lot of doctors them. don't really know much about nutrition either. I mean, no, 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 you're right. right. You prescribe right. your pills, but yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, you have this, there's the bill for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're getting too many uh, antibiotics and everything else into the lake right now, too, is the other problem. Of course, you got other problems besides that, but that's, uh, I'm not sure how it could be removed, but uh, I guess people are working on it. Well, you know, um, uh, um, every day the average adult uh, uses uh, nine personal care products, mm -hmm. and they contain about 126 unique, uh, unique compounds. 
Mm. And, and, you know, and, and what do you use? Uh, you use shampoo, toothpaste, perfume, uh, sunscreen, <laughs> cosmetics. Shaving lotions. Shaving lotions, uh, uh, prescription drugs, over-the-counter drugs. And then we all use it. And when all these compounds meet in the sewer, mm. they form synthetic compounds. And, 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 and they, 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 these are the compounds that who lives in the waterways? Your aquatic life. And that's why you're seeing sometimes your frog changing from male to female. Or your fish, male to female, or nothing. Because of all these drugs. And then they say, Frank, how can we keep this out of the waterways? Well, you know, don't take it. Yeah. Right? Like, I bet you, here's our panel today we had here. And what they probably did this morning was they probably got up, ran <laughs> 10 miles, sure. went, came back home, ate a healthy breakfast, probably oatmeal. They, uh, and, and, and then they, 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 they uh, exercise for... One moment. A moment. Okay. We're just about coming now for a brief oh, intermission. One, one moment. I want to say something oh, now. Yeah. We're going to close this. I didn't, know, <laughs> didn't think we'd be closing a, uh, a, a segment on uh, transgendered fish and amphibians. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Joe. Okay. Rich. Now for a brief intermission. You're listening to Meet the Chicago Historians. Sorry, Jack. Well, friends, now that the warm weather has arrived, it's time to plant your flower and your vegetable garden. It's not too late to start planting your flowers and vegetable gardens, and I have just the right place for you to go. Get your flowers and vegetables at Pesky's Flower and Gift Shop, Garden Center and Greenhouse, which is located at 170 South River Road in Des Plaines. Pesky's has a very large selection of flowers, vegetable plants, and much, much, much more. Whatever you need for your flowers or your vegetable garden, you can find it at Pesky's. Once again, they are located at 170 South River Road. They are just north of Route 14 or Minor Street and south of Golf Road, which is Route 58, and just south of Holy Family Hospital, if you are familiar with that area and they are on the west side of river road and be sure to stop in and visit their flower and gift shop again pesky's flower gift shop and garden center located at 170 south river road in des plains river road is route 45 and they are north of route 14 on or north of minor street and south of golf road and holy family hospital which is Route 58. You can call Pesky's at area code 847-299-1300 for more information. That is Pesky's Flowers, located at 170 South River Road in Des Plaines, Illinois. And once again, their phone number is area code 847-299-1300 for more information. And be sure you tell them you heard it on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network. Now back to our special edition of Meet the Chicago Historian program. Jack? Yes, yes. Yes, Rich? <laughs> Oh, are, are, you, are you doing any golfing uh, this year? I heard you were golfing. Did you golf? Oh, no, never did. Uh -oh. Never? Just miniature golf. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I, I don't know. There goes my joke. Is. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> every time I try, I can never get the ball through the windmill in the last hole, so. <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah, I go to one that doesn't have a windmill. <laughs> or the clown's mouth. <laughs> well, uh -oh. look at the mirror, huh? We have, uh, once again, we have Frank Avila, Commissioner Frank Avila from the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, a.k.a. the Sanitary District. Yeah, right. A.K. we treat poop and pee. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, water reclamation, uh, uh, now is this, is this a, a science that goes back very far, or is, is it a more recent something in our country history? It's, it's relatively new because the fact is that uh, 
before that they used to get rid of the sewage down the either Lake Michigan where a lot of people got sick mm, wonder why typhoid and everything else so they reversed it and that's where Frank came in <laughs> well you know uh, we're, we're talking about you're talking Jack about treatment of uh, poop and pee but you know it started who was the first one that gave instructions how to eliminate a human waste you ever think in history who was the first one and and I I did a lot of history and and, and I I went to a, um, a conference it's called West Tech and they had a history section there and the fellow that had all the history of how wastewater started and he had this one where it first began it's from the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 12 through 14 now this is this is where it first started thou shall have a place also without the camp you gotta have a place without the camp whether thou should go forth abroad so you, you have to have a place outside the camp where you you should go forth abroad where well, they saying that where you should eliminate your waste mm -hmm. and thou shall have a paddle upon thy weapon and it shall be when thou with ease thyself abroad that's when you're pooping and peeing thou shalt dig therewith and shall turn back and cover that which cometh from thee okay. that's the first instruction how to treat poop and pee that's a sanitary pit yeah <laughs> a sanitary pit it sounds like just a little process of elimination to me. <laughs> Right. Did the Romans do much to do anything about that uh, com <laughs> as compared to, let's say, their aqueduct system, which was great for bringing in water? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But did the Romans think of the waste? Well, they did have sanitation, didn't they? Oh, uh, yeah, they, they, they had open you sewers, know, basically. Uh, uh, you know, yeah, that well, was what you hear. You go wrong. back and yeah. look in history, uh, the, in India, India, they had systems to uh, eliminate their waste. Yeah. Well, the problem with India is, they, again, a lot of it got dumped into the river. And they got this holy river there. I forgot the name of it. Ganges. Right? Ganges. Ganges. Well, they have Everybody problems. goes in, yeah. and if you look at it, it's <laughs> a cesspool, you know, basically. Yeah. 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 And for some reason, uh, they don't get sick. But if you're not from that area, you do get sick. They sure. probably do get sick. They never tell anyone. Yeah, that might that's be that's true. But uh -huh. go back yeah. to uh, what we were talking about before is uh, the antibiotics and everything else that are in the lake, which is creating hmm. all kinds of problems now. And... Uh, I don't know if uh, carbon treatment will take care of it or not. Uh, that's a well, very expensive. Very expensive. Well, they, they do it anyway. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. The one that does quite a bit of carbon treatment is uh, over in Indiana. The uh, uh, this, uh, Hammond, Indiana does a lot of treatment. They have, uh, instead of sand filters, they got carbon filters. I see. And then they regenerate the carbon. But that's only a life, short lifespan as such. And then they got to uh, replace it. Where in the Chicago area, everything's a sand, what they call rapid sand filtration. And if they need to treat it with carbon, they treat it as it comes in from the lake. Yeah, we, no, we, we, uh, you're, uh, you're probably talking about a water filtration plant. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're talking about the top end. You're talking about the, the drinking water. Right. Our agency is uh, Metropolitan Water okay. Reclamation District of well, Chicago is the bottom end. I know, but you got to get rid of that stuff too. But now well, you got yeah, but different uh, uh, treatment. Yeah, different, different treatment. But yeah. the fact is, now they're requiring you to be drinkable water coming out, and you got to put in a treatment system to uh, eliminate the pathogens. So the only thing I can see to do it is the ultraviolet light because you can't do ozone, which <coughs> is uh, very dangerous at best to handle. You can't store it. You got to make it that on the site and everything else, and mm. anything else is too expensive to retrofit. So you got that problem coming in. So aren't and you using it ultraviolet? Well, you know, and and and, and that's the problem uh, that that we have. What Albert was saying, we was talking about the water filtration plant. And that's a top end. That's what drinking water is. And we, we are not in charge of the water filtration plant. The city of Chicago is. Well, we're in charge. We have seven wastewater plants throughout Cook County. Wastewater. You know, we, we call a uh, 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 wastewater plant because we're so intelligent. We don't say poop and pee. Yeah. We say wastewater. Yeah. And, and wastewater is a combination of uh, poop and pee and all the waste that the manufacturers do that they'll discharge into our system. We have seven plants. Three are the largest in North America, and one is the largest in the world. At the end of the day, and we work seven days a week, uh, 365 days a year. God bless you. 
Yes. <laughs> and, well, and, and, and you guys are, are working too. I mean, uh, how many here in our panel, and I, I'm gonna, I'll tell you how many raise their hands, how many here, uh, 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 along with uh, John, how many here poop and pee every day? <laughs> Almost uh, every day. I, I, got every only, day. I got only two, three, two, three hands out of uh, seven. So I, I don't know what the rest of the guys do. So we're sa <laughs> you're saying that we're your supplier? Yeah, your supplier. Yeah. So, so you supply us, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, we'll have 550 tons of treated poop that we use for fertilizer. Imagine that. Every day our trucks are moving out. We keep you in business. This yeah. thing yes. is oh, yeah, kept yeah, it yeah. all in or shipped it out. You yes, know, yes, and yes, you'd yeah. be out of What's business? the capacity of your plants <laughs> as far as water? Because you got, when rain comes along, Oh yeah, you, well, you got you got a problem that called the open up the locks of the forest. Stuff right, off uh, the right. Lake. Well, you're, you're true. That that's right. You know, besides, you know, our first mission was to protect our water supply, uh, because we, we, you know, as a human being, our body's what 67 percent of water, yeah. and no, even no. an elephant is 67 percent of water. A chicken <laughs> is even 67 uh, percent <laughs> of water. You see how how nature, how the good Lord made uh, creatures. Yeah. So water very precious and if we don't have water you know we could live without food for what about a month but try not drinking water for a couple of days three days I mean you're gone your, your yeah. organs shut yeah. down and everything yeah. so yeah. we we need water so that's our first mission to protect Lake Michigan our, our, our drinking water and do you know guys that one percent of all the water in the world is for drinking purposes surface water one percent out of that one percent about 20% is right here in the Great Lakes. 20% yeah. of that 1% is right here in the Great Lakes. Mm. And out of that 90% of that 20%, 90% of the 20% in the United States is right here. It's about three drops, huh? Uh, so, so we're living in God's country. Yeah. Because we're, we got water, we got good black dirt for our farming, and you got a place to treat your poop and urine. I mean, we're all... Does one have this uh, three things to live throughout the world? I mean, we're well, very they, fortunate. They already have water rights in uh, certain areas of the world because they don't have water, and they got overpopulation. That if they do have water, they suck it up, and to the point where it's diminished. <laughs> and the other other one is sort of fascinating with it too is the Colorado River. By the time it gets to the mouth of the river, it's almost dry. It's all salt, and it's not sets you unusable. And you know, uh, at, at the district, uh, we have these channels that we built uh, over 100 years ago. We have the North Shore Channel. All right. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, Chicago Controlling Works by Navy Pier, and we have on the south side the uh, O'Brien's Lock. And uh, uh, we take in 300 cubic feet per second a day, water coming in from uh, Lake Michigan. Fresh water. Uh, yeah, and and that's uh, that amounts to about 198 million gallons per day. Wow. Mm -hmm. What do you use that for, Frank? Okay, for flushing? Uh, Processing? Uh, 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 no, no, no. Uh, that is at 270 cubic feet per second of that 305 is used for um, uh, 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 nav navigation for, for uh, uh, keeping our water level up there. Oh. There. And, and 35 uh, cubic uh, feet per second is about 34 gallons is for, for nav navigation. Wow. Yeah. See, so, so we, because the barges are... are Is are there much the navigation? Yeah, you mean well, the barge, oh yeah, the bar, big business in barges. The barges, oh, yeah. still, yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. And then uh, we have the lock in Lockport. You, have, mm -hmm. you, you ever been out there in Lockport? Yeah. 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 You have uh, what we yeah. call the, uh, a lock. And remember that rain in April 18th and 19th uh, last year, uh, last month? We had about five yeah. inches of rain. Yeah. One inch of rain is 15 billion gallons. So yeah. five inches, we had approximately 75 billion gallons of water coming down in Cook County. Mm -hmm. Well, we anticipate all that rain coming in. And, and, and this is where a lot of people don't understand how we control the uh, water in our system, is that they think we could open up the locks no, prior no, before no. that rain, but we can't because we, the level of Lake Michigan is higher than the level of the channel. Mm -hmm. So just think if we were to open the locks before the level of the channel uh, below the level of Lake Michigan. All that water will come in. Yeah. Remember uh, a couple years ago, three, four years ago, under Mayor Daly, when they were having that, uh, they were drilling that, uh, oh, sure. that piling the, the piling, yeah, yeah the piling down on Kidsy. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 
just if, if we were to open up the gate, uh, that whole system and the whole water would come in and all our bases oh, would get that, flooded. That, that, I mean, was, that was another blunder, but not by the, <laughs> by the contractor. He's yeah, responsible right. for it. But anyways, somebody, one of the city employees got blamed for it. And yeah, it wasn't, wasn't his fault. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, uh, uh, the thing on that is the, you got to look at the water purification plants. They put out an average of one billion gallons per day of water. Uh, uh, one billion? Yeah. No. You got about 600 million coming through. The, this is on the average quiet yeah. day one billion on a quiet day now that can go almost double that because yeah. I, I was working at the south plant our yeah. average yeah. at night or quiet day is about 400 million gallons per day uh, see and and, and and we we only draw 198 million gallons per day in in, in our system okay so a lot of it's being used abused whatever and yeah. uh but you got to look at a lot of the land sucks up the water too which you know, people mm. use it for gardening, uh, manufacturing process, and yeah. stuff like that. And they, they can't legally pump it back into the sewer anymore like they used to. <laughs> <laughs> well, we you know, but uh, that's that's our uh, we we, um, we since we handle uh, 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 treating wastewater, we have a whole department to check and see that no one is polluting uh, toxic chemicals into our into the uh, local source. And in Chicago, they have combined source. All right. And uh, 54 other communities have combined source. What do you mean combined source? Combined source is that the storm water and what you flush down, uh, take a bath in your home, goes down into the same system. Same okay. That's combined sewer. Uh, uh, there's about 124 communities in Cook County. Mm -hmm. And out of that, about uh, 54 communities have combined source. The other one has separate source. Storm water and Waste sanitary is separate. separate. Yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, some of the towns are... Um, um, John comes from Cicero. John in Cicero has combined source. And uh, when it rains, when it rains, uh, heavy rain, uh, intense rain in a short period of time, who do you think calls first? What sub what communities in, uh, in the 124 communities here in Cook County, whom do you think calls first? Hmm. The town of Cicero, because they have combined source, and Wilmette. There. Uh, they they're the one that calling the, the and they tell us to uh, open up the gates or the locks. See, it, and, and we'll met their gates at uh, at, uh, uh, at Navy Pier and O'Brien their their locks, in uh, Lockport or locks. So they want us to open up the locks or the gates. But if we do that, I, I mentioned all that water will come in. Yeah, but the other problem that comes with opening the gates is you got those nasty carp sitting in a river too and well uh, and, and, and that's, that <laughs> that's a problem so uh, so far they haven't come close to the lake but they no. don't want to take any chances carp asian about? carp yeah yeah, asian, yeah. yeah if you go down the uh, i've seen photographs of uh, speed boats going down the river there and they got these things flying all yeah. over the place yeah and every so often somebody gets knocked out because they get hit and they're pretty good sized fish yeah uh, what al is mentioning about the asian carp you know uh, the first carp that uh, uh, came to, uh, was the common carp. Right. You know, when they were building the railroad. Mm -hmm. And who brought in the common carp? The Germans. Because uh, they, uh, they, they, they needed to feed the Germans. So the Germans Those were native species to begin with? No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. no. These are all a Asian carp. Mm -hmm. a a a a Asian carp. You had the After common the carp, uh, grass carp. Uh, mm -hmm. No, uh, what are your? Um, you Wasn't oh, a goldfish a carp ah. actually? A gold goldfish? Yeah, yeah gold. Yeah, a family carp. Yeah, yeah. So, you, you so got the car you got the bullheads. You got the well, well, catfish. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. But but you Go got on. your your common carp and your grass carp, okay. and then the two carps that uh, they're worrying about right now is the silver carp, and the big head carp. And and the, the silver carp is one that you're talking about. Um, uh, Al is that they're the ones that jump out of the water because they, they get nervous when they hear noise and they jump up and they, they get uh, uh, both carps, the silver carp and the bit of carps will uh, uh, the length of them before it could go to four feet, 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. Woo! Oh, that's a big fish. Yeah, oh, that's big a big fish. fish. Oh, yeah, B big fish. And, and, and right now they they were introduced over 30 years ago. They brought them in for your fish farms. Right. To they got flooded out. Uh, they got fluff. You know, they brought them in for the uh, algae. You know, they eat the algae yeah, because. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know. yeah. And yeah. and but but the, as Al mentioned, they got flooded out, and somehow they got into the uh, little river. Mm -hmm. Then they got into the Mississippi. And then they start swimming up, and then they, then they got into the uh, Illinois River, and you go around uh, Vanna, Illinois, or Star Rock, 
and the biomass right now is about 85 percent of Asian carp. The biomass. So what the Army Corps did is that they built a, a, a electric cable across right. our channel, but it had to be repaired every nine months. Hmm. So what they did, they put two more extra cables. So now they got a total of three. So now if they have to repair a cable, they could shut down the one that has to be repaired and keep the uh, other two open. Well, there's also a market now for Asian carp. Oh, they yeah. They sell them back to Asia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, people here, for some reason, uh, it's just uh, look the other way when they say mm -hmm. carp. And apparently it's a decent uh, fish dinner. And you can get quite a bit of a meal out of it. They well, took a chef from the Irish American Heritage Center, and she created a whole series of dishes made from the Asian carp uh, for good. an environmental fair that they had at the Irish Center. Yeah. And it was fascinating, and actually it was quite good. She yeah. was a very well, good chef. Well, carp in general is not that bad if you don't get what they call a mud bone. Bone. Yeah, bony, yeah. Bony. They are bony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, John, uh, have you done any history on the Asian carp? No. Uh, when no. it first in, in no. the European? You know, who no. ate Asian carp? All the Europeans? Yeah. Like, like uh, uh, you were mentioning that the Chinese and Japanese eat Asian carp. The Germans eat Asian carp. Uh, the Hungarians eat Asian carp. You know, they were all eating Asian carp in Europe. Well, you know, it's just a guy to do is change the name like they did with the tilapia. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. And and so now we're they're coming here now, and and the Chinese won't do not like their Asian carp in China because all their w uh, waterways is polluted. Very polluted. They prefer our Asian carp, and and, and they signed a deal with the state uh, for twenty million dollars to ship over thirty million pounds of Asian sure. carp over there. The Israelis doesn't understand why our country <laughs> is complaining about the Asian carp because they make cavalta fish out of it. They said, we would love to set up a plant and, and take your a Asian carp. So uh, the Europeans eat Asian carp, but the problem we have here on our side across the pond in, in America is that we're so high class and educated yeah. that mm -hmm. when we, we say, oh, we want to eat the Asian carp, oh my God, who wants to eat the Asian yeah. carp? Change the name. Change, change, change the name. The name. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Actually, when I went on a tour with the, I know you're Chicago, University of Chicago, we actually went and saw the Asian carp. Uh, and what they did when we had our lunch is that they actually gave a, a, had a display of Asian carp uh, in ice for us to actually physically, you yeah. know, see. It's a little harder. It depends on where you are. But when I went on a boat ride with Frank, they jumped into the Not boat. In the and honestly, I must say, I don't care for being on a boat ride where the fish are jumping at me, especially <laughs> oh. if they're four foot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're a little heavy. <laughs> That's a little scary. Yeah, we and have, but the black community likes, <laughs> likes catfish, oh, yeah. and there isn't yeah. any oh, difference right, right, between the right. two, really. So and, maybe and you ought to call it catfish. <laughs> 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 and and we, we caught that day when I took Sherry on and my staff, and I even uh, we brought the fire department. Uh, John Joyce, he's a, a lieutenant in the fire department. We brought him along for a safety reason. We got a fireman to help us out. And we caught 60... Asian carp just by being in the boat with no fishing poles or jumping in. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wow. And if anyone out there that wants a, uh, we have a DVD about the Asian carp or about the woman pumping station, they could contact either John DeVito or myself and we'll uh, uh, gladly give them a, a, a DVD on the Asian carp for educational purposes for their schools or for anyone uh, that, that are interested in, in the Asian carp and also the construction we're doing up in, in uh, the Wilmot pumping station. We're doing construction up there also. Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. understand why they just don't go down uh, the canal there with a big net in front of the boat <laughs> <laughs> and catch all the carp you yeah. want. <laughs> yeah. And, and so, so, the, uh, so now the Army Corps is in charge of all the navigable waterways. Now you're in trouble. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so now the Army Corps has to come up with a report on what to do with the Asian carp by uh, the end of the year. The other one they got to come up with is the uh, zebra mussel. Well, well, yeah. they've been through. I mean, they passed through. What's yeah. that now? Yeah. Uh, zebra mussel. They're still in trouble because they, they, uh, they clean the water. They take everything out of the water. Great filters. But the problem is they also create problems where the other fish don't have anything to eat. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, that, that's why the a Asian carp are surviving because they need a, a lot of food every day and they're eating the food of the other fish. Yeah, and that's that, the other problem. Yeah, yeah. They the eat plankton, about 80 percent. The, the plant thing. Yeah. But if they, I, maybe they're going to throw the uh, zebra mussels at them. No, uh, <laughs> zebra mussel, is that like a shell, like a clam? Like it, a looks like a, it looks like a snail. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, oh, over uh, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they were having trouble with the intake uh, 
crypt, the, the, the water, uh, right. you know, the, the... We were taking them out by the barrels. Yeah, uh, because the uh, zebra mussels used to attach to them on, on the intake, uh, 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 and, mm -hmm. and, and, were, and the water wouldn't come in. So what they did, they put it out a five-inch line going all the way out there, uh, a chlorinated line to kill the zebra mussels. Yeah. Chlorinated. Yeah. yeah, they got to be a fight with that, too, because somebody said, oh, I got the patent on that, and it's a general... <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. And, and they, uh, but the fact is that it's a general known chemical process of sparging material. You know, you do that in all the, a lot of chemical reactions. They do it in the tank. The, the, uh, but the, uh, he, he got a patent on it, so some reason or other got to be a problem. And, and you know, at that time when they were putting a five-inch line inside the tunnel, uh, one weekend it collapsed, a portion of the tunnel collapsed. That wasn't the reason for it. Uh, no, what, what, what was the reason there? Okay, the stupid uh, contractor was told they wanted to clean the tunnel, yeah. but you are not to dewater the con uh, the tunnel. Yeah. So they went out and dewatered it and collapsed. Yeah. Oh, my mm. God. Mm. Oh, yeah, big, big problem. <laughs> and then they had to build a new tunnel. Well, I don't know if they did that or not. Yeah, yeah I, I, I think they did. I, yeah. I didn't keep track yeah. of that. So, and, and uh, so besides the Asian carp uh, we're concerned with is that uh, we're changing the way we run our district. Uh, you know, we spend about $60 million a year for uh, energy from ComEd. Now what we're, we, we, there's a new method out there that we're uh, starting to implement is that we are, how many here in this panel has gas? John, I wonder if John has gas. Okay, uh, okay well, Jack, Jack <laughs> doesn't have gas, but, but, but we all have gas, gas, right? And I'm, I'm sitting in the studio, and I'm reading the sign that John has up there. No smoking. No drinking, no eating, and the last one is no farts. Yeah. <laughs> That's gas. Yeah, okay. Sure. So, so when we treat wastewater plants, is that we have gas also in the digesters, on the methane gas. Yeah. We are going to use all that methane gas to provide energy, and we're going to be e energy neutral. I mean, we're going to any energy that we need to run our plants is going to come from you guys. All right. I, I wish you would tell a san uh, the sanitary department about that when they dump all the garbage <laughs> out there because <laughs> the fact is that it generates a lot and lots of gas. Yes, and yeah, uh, yeah. They, they look at you and say, what are you talking about? You know? And, and you know, I'm glad you brought that up because what we want to do is work a, a, a little uh, deal with the city to collect all that garbage, the organic garbage, and combine it with our waste to create that energy. I mean, a lot of a uh, lot of new technology is coming. Yeah. Uh, ahead. Well, there is a corporation. I forgot where it was at now, but what they do is they they essentially are energy neutral because the fact is that they generate off gas from the waste product of garbage, basically, mm -hmm. and they are able to run the whole plant with garbage, basically, what it amounts to. There's some farmers out there too that with the cows in the barn, well, able to figure out a way of doing yeah. it no. that no. they were able to use. Off gas from the cows <laughs> to uh, generate right, their yeah. power. Right, and there was wow. actually a, a, a dem a exhibit at the Museum of Science and Industry, I believe it was, on that. <laughs> uh, and I was totally fascinated. We just happened to be there at, the be there at that time. Yeah, well, that, that, that's a, that's, that's been going around a few years, but I it, the problem there is the initial capital cost that nobody wants to put out, even though if you got probably pay itself back in 10 years or maybe less I don't know well are, are, are you trying to say that uh, if we poop at home we could use that poop and uh, burn it and, 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 then, and, and then we use it to cook our food there, because, because that's that's yeah, uh, what they do yeah. in, in some you got, countries you got to yeah. right? yeah. put a digester that, huh? that yeah, digest. generates heat yeah generate heat there yeah. you yeah. got to put a digester yeah, yeah, in there yeah. no, not everybody yeah. wants to put a digester yeah. in the house <laughs> this whole conversation made me think of the recent <laughs> story of the federal government with the study about uh, trying to breed the flatulence free cows because <laughs> there's too much uh, methane or whatever out yeah, on the plain, yeah. Great Plains and I was thinking uh, what are they thinking about to begin with um, didn't we used to have like millions of head of bison, deer, yeah. pronghorn, yeah, antelope, yeah, yeah. bighorn, sheep, yeah, yeah. whatever out there yeah. already. Yeah. So it would bison seem like in particular millions and millions. Yeah. Bison, yeah. right. I would say now uh, didn't we survive that even yeah, before yeah. mankind? Yeah. Well, there just weren't that many people. You didn't, you didn't, yeah, you didn't uh, have any people yeah, out yeah. there. Somebody yeah. discovered it. Yeah, but I'm so. It wasn't affecting It was home, home of the rings with the deer yeah. and the antelope play. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that's true. And also, when they 
poop, and they come over it. They were uh, fertilizing. I mean, they were uh, digging it up because they were. Uh, uh, well, sure. yeah, the, the cows are pussy, though. Uh, if you go into a uh, <laughs> pasture. <laughs> And the cows, yeah, I hate fussy cows. Age, they, they'll eat all around it, but for some <laughs> reason, <laughs> and the horses will eat the rest of it. So yeah. he, he got co thought, cows, the horses together. That's interesting. I thought it was contented cows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's what was the fight with. Uh, remember years ago, they had the range war between the sheepmen and the cattle. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. It really made no sense because the fact is there was no relation or any problem between the two because the fact that where mm. the cows would eat, the sheep would eat. Oh, the yeah. problem with the sheep is they would go all the way to the bottom of the right. of the stalk and they would and there the also. bottom of the stalk is bringing us to the top of the uh -oh. hour <laughs> now for a brief intermission you're listening to meet the chicago historians Well, friends, summer is here, and now is the time to think about your roof, siding, and gutters on your home or your place of business. We could get some heavy rainstorms in the next few months, so be sure the roof, the siding, and gutters on your home are in good shape. You don't want mold or mildew in your attic or crawl space, or you don't want drip, drip, drip on the ceilings in your rooms or have walls damaged by leaky gutters or bad siding. So don't have double expense. Sooner or later you are going to have to get them repaired. So call Best Brothers Roofing and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Mike Best will drive over in his shiny red truck with ladders on top and Best Brothers roofing signs on the door. Mike will look over your roof, siding, and gutters and give you an estimate and go from there. So don't have double expense. Call Best Brothers Roofing for a free estimate at area code 630-616-1359. That's Best Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Gutters at area code 630-616-1359. Once again, call today, area code 630-616-1359. Now back to our show. Well, wow, that was a quick break. You know, always those yeah. break time always go fast, don't they? You know, they do. Longer than commercials, I suppose. Anywho, uh, in as much as um, many of you listen to us in segments and little chapters like uh, the cliffhangers, uh, for <laughs> one, we're gonna, we decided to end every every segment with a cliffhanger to see how we come out next sec next time. We also must be introducing reintroducing everyone so you can remember what these voices who they belong to. So today we'll start over here with uh, our guests, Frank Avila, Commissioner Frank Avila from yeah, the me Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Metropolitan Chicago or Greater Chicago. Uh, Jack, that is a confusing title of our name. I mean, I, I do not like our name, but uh, as Jack mentioned, my name is Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm a elected official. I'm a commissioner at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago. And when I say that name, they think we're the water filtration plant, the drinking water out of Navy Pier. We're, we do not treat uh, water for drinking purposes. That's the top end. What we do is the bottom end. We treat poop and pee. And our, our mission is to protect our Wait, the water supply, uh, which is like Michigan, because we need water to survive. And the city of Chicago will take that water uh, uh, filtered out for drinking purposes and 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 we will protect the water supply and I mentioned we treat poop and pee and also we try and manage flooding these are the three main things that we do our budget is about 1.1 billion dollars wow. uh, we have seven plants in Cook County three are the largest in North America 
and one is the largest in the world. And if anyone out there, uh, even our, our panel dis uh, people here that wants to uh, uh, come and visit our plant to see how we treat poop and pee, uh, we give tours. Our largest plant is Stickney, and that's up there uh, on 39th Street in Austin. And, and that'd be an excellent plant to tour. And what I did today, I gave the panel treated poop. What I did, I, I went to the uh, 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 wastewater treatment plant, I got on my boots, I got my shovel, and I followed when they pooped from their house and followed all the way down to our plant, and I gave them separately each one of their poop that's been treated, and they have their sample right here, and so this is a gift that I'm giving them to the panel. There. So what here's... What can you do with it? <laughs> uh, what do, well, what, what you could do, you, you could grow your, uh, uh, we give it to the farmers for a, a livestock crops. The farmers love your poop okay. treated because they have more yield per acre on this type of fertilizer. When you buy fertilizer from the store, it only has three nutrients, right? What, what are they? Potassium. Mate nitrate. Nitrogen. And uh, phosphate. Ph yeah. Three. Yours, what you give us, has more nutrients. And this might even kill the weeds. Too. Wow. <laughs> said it, um, yeah. It's lacking what potash a little or something in there. No, 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 no. If you add some some uh, ashes to it, it's perfect or something. No, no. This is this is all, all you would need. Also, uh, uh, as um, uh, John mentioned, the three nutrients that we have is again what nitrate, N nitrogen, potassium, potassium, and phosphate. And well, phosphate. That's your 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 three things that they look at right. when you right. buy fertilizer. So right. if you got six 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 or whatever it is. It, yeah. Uh, equal it's it's number. Number. And, and, and the problem that we're having, uh, the whole world is having, is that the phosphate is being depleted. And, and so now at the district, well, we're it, the depleted because uh, 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 I think that most of the supply is in Morocco. A lot in Florida, too. Yeah, and, and, and they figure in, in 20 more years it'll be gone. You know, so where, you know where the phosphate comes from, don't you? Yeah. Um, the Birds, um, much of them. A lot, lunch a, lot of, a lot of it came from uh, bats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, they call it guano. And, and so it's been the police. So now what we're doing at the district, we're going to cap it because you guys give us a lot of that okay. when you eliminate your waste. So we're going to capture that mm -hmm. and sell it. And this wasn't mm -hmm. the process. Next up, our next guest, uh, <laughs> ma'am. <laughs> I'm Sherry Avila, and I'm a docent at the Irish American Heritage Center, which is located at about 4626. Or 4630, maybe. No, I think you're right, 26. 20, 4626? Yeah. North Knox, uh, which is uh, near Cicero and Wilson, uh, and very accessible off the expressway. Uh, and uh, actually, we offer this 86,000 square feet, four stories. It used to be Mayfair Junior College, as well as actually it used to be an also an elementary school before that. And at the end, before uh, it went into disrepair, it was a, uh, a Chicago Board of Education administrative facility. Mm. But then when it uh, was no longer being used, that's when the kids started roller skating through the halls mm. and uh, putting graffiti on the walls. Uh, but anyway, um, since then, uh, the Irish uh, Fellowship Club uh, bought that building for uh, $501,000 and they put another 100000 in to remodel it and 90% or maybe 99% of all the remodeling in that building is done by volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're, I think in some cases the volunteers aren't even necessarily uh, Irish. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> Uh, and but uh, if you want to go over and see that, um, we have docent tours uh, almost every day of the week. And what, what word is they using? Dosage. Docent uh, or tours. Dorsen yes. Dorsen. Basic educated tour guide. Yeah, a tour yeah, guide. Okay. okay. Educated. They know what yes, the tour oh, guide. Okay. Uh, t our tour guides have undergone training. You want me? And uh, they will uh, sh show you through the building, and you'll be surprised because, for example. In the museum on the second floor, we have a chair that was built for President Howard Taft wow. by the Irish Large Fellowship Club. Chair. 
in yeah, 1910. Yeah, yeah, right. And yes, yes, I understand that he was quite big. It, was a, it is a he big was, chair. He was a big guy. It is a big chair. Yeah. And since then, President Truman, Truman also sat in it, as, as well as the hmm. presidents of Ireland and several other notable people have sat in that chair, and their names are engraved on a little. Uh, plaques along the side. Mm. So uh, that's one of the many uh, things as well as the belief that uh, Phil was talking about earlier that yeah. there's uh, quite a collection of 701 pieces of, of belief. Yeah. Uh, so uh, there's just, you'd be surprised. And then the uh, library has a whole genealogy section as well as a huge uh, collection of something like 30,000 books. But we also have a story hour for children and we have an, once a month we have a, a, a Irish books discussion that is facilitated by Virginia Gibbons who teaches at uh, <laughs> literature over at Oaks and Community College. And everybody loves her uh, great books class. Uh, and Chief collection. Oh, there is a, in the museum, there is a Chief O'Neill collection and of course, I know there's some people here who know more about Chief O'Neill than I even know. I was there last night uh, for <laughs> Father's Day. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, uh, exactly what all the connection is, uh, there was a really chief, of, uh, you know, a real Chief O'Neill. He was Chief of Police from around in Chicago from around 1901 to about 1907 or so. And uh, but there is a restaurant and beer garden at Albany and Elston, 3471 North uh, Elston. And uh, they have artifacts in there, but I don't think they're, you know, they're, they're really, um, they look like they're English Bobby uh, type <laughs> things. You know. Well, you know, it was long a long time ago, but his claim to fame was he was born in Ireland, comes over here, gets on the police department in the 1870s, right after the Chicago fire. And he realized that all the Irish songs that he had sung uh, back home, uh, they were not written down. There was no melodies written down. The words weren't written down. They were, you know, passed along, uh, you know, as folk Irish songs. folk songs, yeah. Yeah. So he started to uh, record them as best as he could. He couldn't write uh, or, you know, like music, et cetera. But... Uh, so he had a sergeant, and, and any time uh, an Irish folk singer would come to Chicago, they would visit, and they'd write down the, the songs. So he saved about 700 songs, well, I published them himself, and he's really well-renowned in Ireland. Uh, and that's the story behind him, is that uh, he... Uh, he recorded, you know, both the yes. words and the melody of all those Irish. Yes, uh, actually, folk I songs. thought it was four thousand five hundred tunes. Well, it could be, uh, and at least eight books that he published. But my favorite story about him is when he was young, before he on his way over, sort of, or before he came over uh, to the states. He was from Cork, by the way. Um, that he uh, was shipwrecked, and because he grew up in a musical family, he knew how to play the flute, oh. and he was on this desert island and they had a ration, ration for food. So get this, he played his flute, and because he played his flute, they gave him a little bit more food. Oh. So when, when the people were picked up after the shipwreck, uh, that he, well, his health was far better than the, uh, yeah. most of the other yeah. sailors that were there. I, I never heard that, but he, he uh, performed very valiantly at the uh, uh, Iroquois Theater Fire. He got out of the scene very Probably he was healthy because soon. he ate all that flesh flute. Yeah. Oh, and uh, w w was that the start of all the policemen being Irish at that time too? No, I think uh, <laughs> I, one, one of the things I used to say in class was the well, Irish came over here and invented the police and fire department. Yeah, I think so they could get the big thing was that they had the language. Uh, well, they yeah, had the, the language. Fact that yeah. Yeah. Most of the other people yeah. didn't want to yeah. be that fact. Yeah. Yeah. It's like yeah. an Irishman yeah. here didn't consider himself to be a foreigner. Yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> Not foreigner, Irish. Uh, the other thing is, do you know what uh, uh, Howard Taft had to do with baseball, don't you? Yeah. He no, threw out the first. Oh, he threw out the first, first ball yeah, for them. Not only that, but the seventh inning stretch. Yeah. Oh, seventh inning stretch. Really? Oh, yeah, that's he, he so got out the stretch. Everybody uh, followed. Yeah, he was so big. <laughs> 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 about the seventh inning, he got a little tired, so he got up. <laughs> <laughs> they were 
and we thought he was going to leave see. because he was <laughs> and then yeah, no he one, got up. No one beat. <laughs> then he sat back down again, so consequently he had so to the, the, Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. There's, yeah. a, there's a story told about him that he was he was in the Philippines. He, uh, he was appointed governor general of the Philippines yeah. after, we, after we took the yeah. Philippines oh, yes. in the Spanish-American War. And there was he was he had cabled to his friend in Washington that uh, you know what was going on there, and the, uh, his friend cabled back. I understand you're not feeling well. Is that true? And Taft cabled back, absolutely untrue. In fact, I was out for a three-hour horseback ride today. His friend in Washington cabled back. Well, then, how is the horse? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Was it a Clydesdale? <laughs> it probably had to be. Yeah. I didn't know about the seventh inning stretch. Me either. Yeah. That's very yeah. interesting. I wonder which of the 7,000 islands in the Philippines he was on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, probably the no, same one that uh, yeah. MacArthur came on and off a few times. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, the, the Rock? Yeah. yeah. Actually, uh, I was in uh, the Philippines for two weeks on a mission trip, medical oh. and uh, construction mission trip. I ended up being the photographer. Uh, it was really, really hot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's one I thing have, the yeah. Philippines does have is a lot of heat. Yeah. <coughs> I have my father's ring, which is inscribed Philippines, oh. 1945. My oh. dad was an infantryman in the liberation oh. of Manila oh. in 1945. He bought this in Manila oh. uh, when they were, you know, when they took it back from the Japanese. Oh, no, well, my dad there. was also in the Philippines during World War II, oh. but he was with uh, the railway brigade. He had been a railroad engineer. Okay. And so he was with, I think it was the 727th Railway. Uh, sure. I don't think that yeah, railway units, that yeah. unit exists anymore. But he was telling me that uh, he was very involved in all the railroads that they uh, constructed <coughs> and so forth in the Philippines. But then he told me that when he left, some of them were bombed. Some of the ones that he worked on were bombed, and they, they weren't there anymore. So he was there before? The, the Japanese, he was there in the 30s, before the Japanese invasion? No, no, he was there... Uh, in the 40s and during the war, War II. World War II. Because after we took it back, the Japanese yeah. weren't. Yeah, they were well, gone. Yeah, well, they, went, they decided they wanted to bomb a few times, though. I uh, didn't know I'm that. But by, by the way, that, that yeah. battle for Manila was. Oh, it, it was brutal. Very bloody. They yes. didn't have to do it, but the, the, the Japanese. Uh, and they killed a lot of civilians, and they destroyed the town. Oh, yeah. My dad was Completely. on the Bataan Peninsula because they, they took that back from the Japanese. Yes, yeah. yes. They landed at the Lingayen Gulf uh, in January of 1945 mm. and fought their way that into That was a tough... And as I like to tell people, my dad's division was pulled back in the summer of 45, and they were being refitted for the invasion of Japan. Oh, yeah. My dad's division oh. would have, in March of 46... Yeah would have landed in the invasion of Japan, and their objective would have been the city of Tokyo. Oh, wow. What division, infantry. do you recall? It was the 6th Infantry Division. The 6th, okay. I saw, I, they, they recently declassified the maps. His division was supposed to land between Yokohama and Mount Fuji and fight its way across the Tokyo Plain to the city of Tokyo. Yeah. Mm. And of course, but that all came to an end with the atomic brutal. bomb. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the propaganda in Japan was the fact is that the white devils will come in and uh, destroy the place and make prostitutes out of all the women, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They were uh, destroying the place anyway with the bombing. Yeah. You know. By but the way, uh, you, you, you know, uh, you mentioned the O'Brien Lock. Most yeah. people are not aware of it. It's almost impossible to get to. Well, it, it's it, not, it, not open to the public. I, I you know, it's yeah. still like on 134th and yeah. the Calumet River. Yeah, just yeah, and it, it's the same size as the. It's 600 feet long. Yeah. And how wide is it? Uh, oh, it's uh, wide it's enough as uh, to get a barge through. You guys. Yeah, well, it's, yeah. it's as wide as the yeah. one at yeah. the mouth of the Chicago yeah. River, yeah. I yeah. think. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes, identical? yes, yes. I sent the fireboat <laughs> through there one time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there isn't much of the city south of there. You know. No, no. Wait a minute. Hold it. Before we go any further. <laughs> let's let's comply with the request we have about this uh, about this segmented thing now. Well, to my right, our regular panel member, and what is your name, sir? My name is Al Opitz. I'm uh, president of the Austin Army Community Council and and student at Ken Littles. And you said you're an engineer before. Oh, a chemical engineer. On what railroad? Oh no! no. <laughs> I worked for the city of Chicago. I started at the top, worked my way down. Ah. <laughs> 
Okay, next up, sir. My name is John S. Kachalko, and I am a longtime fan of the most celebrated sanitation worker in American history, Ed Norton. Ed Norton. <laughs> Subterranean engineer in the New York sub <laughs> system. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, you remember what happened when he took the, uh, the promotion? He washed out. He washed out. <laughs> Oh. Exam, yeah. He got his job because he was working as a as a caddy, yeah. and the uh, the fellow he was working for hit the golf ball out of the out of the golf course, and he went running after it and fell down the manhole cover into yeah. the sewer, <laughs> and met the manager and got a job. <laughs> one, one of the shows they were saying if you got to be whatever this position was, you got to talk to the head. Uh, what was it? Uh, oh, the Grand raccoon? Imperial raccoon. He says, of the, of the uh, I could talk to him every day. He works right. next to me in the sewer. <laughs> he works next right. to me in the sewer. And, and the other thing is, uh, he really is, uh, he can talk standing up. I mean, he's a great, great orator. And Cramden says, yeah, if he sat down, he'd drown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and your name is, sir? Uh, Ken Little, and uh, I was with the fire department for 35 years. Uh, and then I taught for 21 years. I started my own class in Chicago history at Wright College, and I'm a are you still doing that? Or? No, I just I retired. Yeah, he, he's been talking ever since. Too. Oh yeah, I haven't stopped talking. Can you have some little private sessions or something? I <laughs> I love to give tutoring. tours of Chicago, uh -huh. and uh, I think I'm going to try and uh, I just put a resume together. Can you imagine a resume? I'm 80 years old, uh. <laughs> but I'm going to uh, uh, hopefully. T um, Talk to people in nursing homes and assisted living, and you know, just talk about Chicago. I, you know, I've been in every community, and you know, with the fire department, and I know just about where all the streets were are. And all yeah, this that. guy knows he names the streets. Every, that, uh, <laughs> they're just street signs. Every like what's every. the one, Rumsey? Rumsey. Like the yeah, the I don't. I haven't. And Pulaski, I think. Yeah. It was yeah, I guess it is. A little sign there says, and it all there's a little, a little yeah. dirt alley. It's and a dirt, yeah. Right. But street. yet the street picks up in Oak Lawn. I, I think it picks up in Oak Lawn, yeah. So. There's yeah. also an Irene Street that's about a block long. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, How about, yeah. Um, yeah, about the food? You, you eat all the food in those different neighborhoods? Uh, no, not really, but... Uh, I have. Uh, <laughs> you know what? You well, tell. one of the things, uh, Commissioner, hey, is that... Oh, you're uh, up, the majority of all the students, you know, c being at Wright, which is at 4350 North Narragansett, they don't know the south side, so that's where I take them to the oh, south God. side, you know. And we'd wind up at the South Shore Country Club or, yeah. or uh, mm -hmm. Cultural Center and, you know, look at all the little private park streets and the hotels. And yeah. south side is beautiful. It has a lot of attraction. A lot of people never been to Pullman. A lot of mm -hmm. people oh, never yes. been to B Beverly Morgan Park. Uh, and Hegwish, which uh, there isn't much to see there. Yes. But How about Rainbow Beach, and why is it called Rainbow Beach? <laughs> I not have because of the cones and not because of the Rainbow Coalition. It's the Rainbow Division, World War I. Oh, I oh, did Rainbow know. Division. I see yeah. that. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I, I didn't know, know that. that I worked next Douglas door to it. MacArthur. So I yeah. saw it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> MacArthur was in the Rainbow, Rainbow Division. Division. Was he? Was he? Yeah, MacArthur yeah. commanded. I think MacArthur may have commanded the Rainbow Division in World no. War One. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was his father. Yeah. I never saw. No, no, it's no World War One. Pershing was the overall commander, right? Yeah. Well, of the entire expeditionary yeah. force, but I think MacArthur was divisional commander of the Rainbow yeah. Division. Yeah. So what was, was it rank him or his him? father? Pardon? Him or his no, father? No, no, Douglas MacArthur. Okay. The, the yeah. World War II Douglas MacArthur. Okay, I know uh, he was his father was a general, too. That was yeah. even early. That was no, in the 1880s. In the Civil, in fact, in the Civil War, his dad was in the Civil War. Oh, Did you know that in War. South Holland there was a, a German prisoner of war camp? Yeah, all uh, over the place. Kind of yeah. Yes. World War II uh, time? That was kind of, yes, World War II. I ran into a woman whose husband, father, excuse me, father had been in that camp. Uh, but he went back to Germany. He didn't come back to the States. Uh, but she ended up marrying an American GI. <laughs> mm. And she moved, by coincidence, to South Holland. She didn't realize that was where her father had been you know in something? a uh, wow. uh, mm. prisoner of war camp. And that prisoner of war camp was converted, last I heard, to a Girl Scout camp, which is even more interesting. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah. Well, the, the, uh, after the war, they used to have a lot of uh, Quonset Hut villages in Chicago. Yeah. They had one over on... Uh, Lawrence and uh, 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 Pueblo or uh, Cumberland, Cumberland Avenue there. You still got the fire hydrants out there, yeah. although they're not working. For uh, yeah, hmm. uh, did they have, to have something to do with prisoners? I thought no, that was. No, uh, that was. Uh, they that came was back and there was no no place for them to live. Yeah, yeah. So they built Quonset Hut villages yeah, and there's yeah. the housing circle, yeah. going on. Fifty two was a big housing boom. Yeah. 
Because uh, that was the one when uh, they built all those houses in uh, Alberto and Central. That was all, yeah. that whole complex oh, yeah. was mm -hmm. built in that period of time. Oh, I'm in, I'm in Garfield Ridge. A lot of them were built out yeah. right around the Yeah, well, so that had, was a big, yeah. big boom at the time. There were, there were virtually no homes built in the United States from 1929 when the market crashed right. until 1945 because of the Depression oh, and then yeah. World War right. II. So you don't, yeah, you don't find many that. houses built in 1935 or 1940. No, my, my house was rare. built in 1939, so I'll disagree well, with you. Well, <laughs> I, I, I said you, find many. I said many. you don't find many. You don't find many. But, but uh, basically, sure. basically, home building came to an end with the yeah. Great Depression. I, I never saw a house built you know, while I was... Uh, yeah, but uh, Shorts uh, Village, which is out there on uh, Oak Park in Belmont, was uh, all the buildings what? are from about 1939 through 41. That is, yeah, there was there was a, a bunch of uh, bungalows built. By the way, I was going to say um, Fort Sheridan had a whole bunch of uh, German war prisoners, yeah. Yeah. and they didn't let them go after the war. They didn't want to send a couple of hundred thousand young oh, yeah. Germans. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, in Holdridge, Nebraska, or near Holdridge, not in Holdridge proper, I have aunts who live there. They had a German war of camp. Uh, and what was interesting mm -hmm. about that, and this is what I'm hearing more and more, that those German prisoners were allowed to go out right. to the fields yeah. and work the fields work, because yeah. their fathers, husbands, all the men were at war, and they needed people out in those fields to work those crops. They used, yeah. to, give, they used to give them passes all the time. Yes, they <laughs> were actually, I heard they were treated like gold because, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and a lot of them did come back and become citizens yeah. in Nebraska. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the same thing in uh, Michigan, my wife's brother-in-law, whose father, stepfather actually, was in some in Michigan. There was a camp, and a lot of these guys came back and settled in Michigan later. And they were allowed in the afternoon to be working, whether they worked <laughs> picking the crops. Then one at a time, we'd go across the road to sit down for 20 minutes at the bar, have a beer, have a cigarette with one. <laughs> oh, I know. They never had it so good. They, I was going to say they never had it so good. Yes. Right. At Fort Sheridan, they, 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 they were coming into Did Chicago on a regular basis. Yes. John? But none of them ever went AWOL because if they did... They wouldn't, you know, be, uh, uh, you know, sent back home again. And they used to, you know, so they'd come down. They'd live in, <laughs> live in the Y for. They'd have to be a hard, hard-boiled, uh, real Nazi to want to escape. Well, a lot of them, yeah. were, a lot of them were draftees too, you know. So yeah. they really had no like yeah. it at the war. I always wondered if anyone did any attempt to study their attitudes. I mean, hmm. the, the 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 ordinary German soldier who had never been to the United States, never traveled. Yeah. What, who came here and then actually saw what America was compared to what the Nazis had told, told them America them was. Yes. I'd be curious if anyone yeah. ever actually tried to interview these guys uh, and get an idea oh, of what oh, they thought yeah. of America when they were here. There have been I, some books written. I, th I yeah. actually bought one when I was in Nebraska. <laughs> yeah. well, the, the other story I got was that the Americans got along better with the German prisoner of war than they did with the English. <laughs> what was the saying about the Yanks? The only, only three things wrong with one of them? Yeah. They're here. Overpaid, oversexed, and over here. Right. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. a great line. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was at Fort Lewis in the state of Washington, uh, on our side, I might add, as an MP, and occasionally you had to guard a, uh, a prison. You know, you know, it was a camp now, of course, it was American, but it was identical to style like 17. Mm. It was, a, you know, towers and... Yeah. 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 Well, that's, they had yeah. the towers that was at the one in Nebraska. Was, yeah, it was built as a German prisoner war camp. What was it now when you were there? Uh, it, well, it was, uh, it was a, um, uh, you know, a jail, actually, for uh, soldiers who had sentences less than six months. Okay. Yeah. You know, like a little AWOL or a fight yeah. or something. But if it was more than six months, they sent them out, you know. Well, the other, the other story I got to tell, we, my dad took me to Germany in 1952. We met a English soldier there. He says, I like it here in Germany. Got better food than they do in England. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, what else is new? Well, my, favor <laughs> my, my, my favorite story is, I think it was 1946, 1947, they had the European Games. They, they were putting together kind of like the Olympic mm -hmm. Games, but European countries only. And there was a German team admitted into it. And the, uh, the German team defeated the British at soccer. Yeah. And the story was that there was a, the German uh, head of the team, you know, the official that was there handling mm -hmm. the team, said to the British British official, he says, well, what do you think of this? We beat you at your national sport. <laughs> and the British uh, leader said, well, that's okay. Two years ago, we beat you at your national <laughs> sport. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have one more person to 
introduced or reintroduced everyone before we get to our next break. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is nothing personal about leaving you. Well, this is our mystery guy. Who, who can remember who wasn't reintroduced? Perhaps your announcer, oh, yes. Richard Lang, yes. And my background is in history, too. I've taught a little bit of uh, modern European and American history, and now I've become more active in the societies that involved local history, like the Irving Park Historical Society. <laughs> yes, in, in radio, you do radio. Uh, a group of us do recreations of old-time radio. Yeah. Those that's were the days radio players. That's a lot of that's fun. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, do you know that still? Yeah. People, oh, yeah. The other People one love the Bickersons and uh, Jack Benny. Yeah. The other one that's quite big in this area, too, is the Northwest Historical Society, which is, uh, I think, $10 a year membership. And they, uh, they advertise a lot of uh, programs that other organizations right. are putting in, and they have a few of their own, even though the, the problem is that the, the membership, the people that want to work are less and less type of problem. That's and super uh, uh, so... Some of the stuff is not always uh, as accessible or as often as you like oh, to have yeah. it done, I guess. They they involve all of um, Jefferson uh, Township, basically. Yeah. Basically, yeah. yeah. They yeah. they have put out some very interesting uh, material, though. Yeah, but yeah, uh, uh, very you know, stuff you know, like that. It's good. You, you, know, you live on the northwest side, and uh, you have a situation. You're, going, you're driving north on Central Avenue, and, mm. uh, you know, you cross Higgins, and all of a sudden the street you know, goes a block west and then continues, you know. Well, excuse me, can I better yeah. interrupt? Oh, again okay, interrupt. For financial reasons and say, you've been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians. Please don't turn that dial. looking for a good place to have lunch or dinner? Well, I have just the right place for you to go. And that is Sorrento's Village Restaurant and Pizzeria, which is located at 2318 North Mannheim Road in Melrose Park. Now, every Friday from 5 o'clock in the afternoon until 8.30 p.m., you can enjoy their all-you-can-eat buffet and pasta bar. A perfect way for the family and friends to enjoy a delicious, fresh meal together for just $12.95 for adults and $8.95 for children 10 years and under. Sorrento's is proud to introduce its Friday night buffet with pasta bar made to order. Fresh pasta with your choice of vodka, four cheese alfredo, or marinated sauce, plus Sorrento's delicious meatballs and sausage and a buffet that is bursting with flavors from risotto, seafood, and chicken dishes, and a variety of Sorrento's pizza and full salad bar, and garlic bread. And once again, $12.95 for adults and $8.95 for children, 10 years and under. All you can eat. Also, you can enjoy their affordable, fast, perfect, full-service catering. Catering might sound expensive, but when you choose Sorrento's, we do the work and you take the applause for a memorable party for every occasion. Or use one of our beautiful banquet rooms accommodating 20 to 200 guests. Many catering orders can be prepared the same day or within 24 hours. No other weekday lunch buffet like it. Sorrento's weekday, Monday to Friday lunch buffet is perfect for business, get-togethers, and even funeral luncheons. Soup, salad, pasta, pizza, vegetable, freshly baked bread, meat or fish, plus dessert. You can call 847-455-9440 for group prices. On Tuesday... Purchase a regular price soft drink and enjoy the favorable buffet at half off. Remember, for the best food in town, go to Sorrento's Village Restaurant and Pizzeria, which is located at 2318 North Mannheim Road in Melrose Park, and that is just south of Fullerton Avenue on the west side of the street. And plenty, plenty of free parking. <laughs> yeah, there's no parking meters there. So you can call Frank or Sam at 847-455-9440. 
at Sorrento's Village Restaurant located at 2318 North Mel Mannheim Road in Melrose Park. Once again, you can call 847-455-9440. That's 847-455-9440 for the best food in town. Or visit their location at 2318 Mannheim Road in Melrose Park. We return you to our discussion. Here we go, and we're go. back, folks. And believe me, as usual, and I think you, our guests will agree, uh, that the time moves right along. We're enjoying ourselves like this. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Okay, yeah, once quickly, let's, flies <laughs> let's re reintroduce everyone. Well, let, let the boss is here. Okay, I have a question to ask you, Commissioner. Yes. Many times I go up and down the streets or highways or whatever, and I see these little canopies or these little things that are, that are sit over manholes. Can you explain to, the, to, the, uh, mm. to our listening audience what you are monitoring by uh, uh, when, when, when they have those monitor those things over the manholes or the, uh, what, what, are they, what are they doing? I, I well, think that's uh, the city pr uh, job for the uh, most part, though. Uh, uh, that's, uh, three, but what, what we do have sometimes in our, our, our manholes that we'll take the velocity of the uh, flow of, of right. the uh, of the uh, wastewater going through, or maybe we're uh, testing the quality of, of the water. Mm. Because, you know, sometimes we'll give someone discharging their toxic chemicals into the system. Mm -hmm. And so we'll just trace it back to that uh firm yeah. or, or that person that discharging uh, uh, toxic chemicals so you know it may take us uh, uh, a little yeah. while but but we'll find that person as long as they repeat themselves okay. yeah along yeah yeah we'll f uh, find it we'll, we'll find it man. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're, we're very good at it yeah the city does the same thing in a lot of yeah. places too that uh, quality of sewer water because they are also have to maintain the sewer lines that go to the sanitary district because that's part of the sewage system yes and, 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 and then, you know, there are always, you know, um, we were talking about pharmaceutical drugs or prescription drugs or how to keep that out of the water. And, you know, there's no easy solution because it, it's up to us. You know, we have to change our lifestyle. We have to uh, 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 maybe get up in the morning, do more exercise, uh, maybe eat better food, uh, maybe uh, improve our mind, our, our thinking, because it, it's a lifestyle that definitely we have to change from here on in because our water supply is not uh, is not going to increase right. the water that we're drinking now we've been drinking that same water two thousand years ago because you cannot manufacturing water so yeah. uh, uh, it's a water cycle it comes down it evaporates comes it back. comes out back mm -hmm. so once, it, 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 once it evaporates so anything that is dissolved in it stays right yeah. Yeah. It just goes away. And, and 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 also our our uh, our uh, body our pores evaporates you know mm -hmm. you know so so all of that goes up and it comes down. That's the water cycle. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing that goes into the water system now, and a lot of you know Catholics are in it, but uh, it's birth control pills. <laughs> oh, wonderful! The estrogen and stuff like that go into the sewer system because it's not mm -hmm. digested by the body as mm -hmm. such. So you have all those little things that are pros and cons because if you don't have birth control and you have overpopulation, you got more problems because. Mm -hmm. Every person creates so much pollution in a lifetime. I, and that's not a problem, though. The, the problem is really underpopulation, no matter what anybody tells you. Look at Europe. That's they want people to... Uh, they're not replacing their population not, no. in mm -hmm. Europe or so, Japan. So China's going to have a problem with that someday. They're reaching <laughs> the point. They're, they're, they're rethinking. Yeah. Well, China so. does have a problem because uh, they're polluting their own people uh, all with all these toxic chemicals. Oh yeah. I mean they. I mean they're doing a, a bad. You know, we buy most of their products. Uh, most of their products. I. I. I tend to stay away from buying Ch uh, food stuff. from China, especially food. dog food or food. I mm. will not touch that because I don't know how they process yeah. that and food. And China is not terribly concerned about the environment. They're burning mm. coal to beat the band. They're well, not the least bit interested. Well, is there anyone the who's is good with the environment? Actually, the U.S. is. Yeah. Sure. Oh, not. there's other countries that are, but the fact mm. is that China doesn't have any other. Mm -hmm. uh, materials to burn except coal, so they have to import oil, and that's one of the biggest commodities of importation to China now is uh, oil. But they 
I don't know if they do uh, refining there or not. I don't know if they buy uh, refined I mean, oil or something. In terms of like industry and power generation, they're they're burning tremendous amounts mm -hmm. of yeah. coal. And they uh, also without buy any it. concern about you know, scrubbing it or. No. It's all soft coal. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, well, you know, some of the products that is made here in America, when they sell it overseas, they have to remove some of the chemicals to sell that same that product overseas. But that same product, when they sell it here in America, uh, they keep the toxic chemicals in that product. Well, now, mm -hmm. John, uh, who, who uses Johnson Johnson? Well, Aldo product? probably. Uh, well, <laughs> they, 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 this year in 2013, mm -hmm. They're, they said that they're going to remove all the toxic chemicals from their baby products, shampoo, you yeah. know, because they have formaldehyde in it. Mm -hmm. But Europe will not, uh, they tell Johnson Johnson, you don't give us those products that has formaldehyde. Mm -hmm. So uh, they make two different ki kind of products. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, formaldehyde will affect your skin, too, because uh, they used to have, you got formaldehyde in some of your elastics, stuff like that, that you put on your skin and you'll, you'll get... Uh, Rash and stuff like that from the formaldehyde, so it's it's not a real good stuff. Formaldehyde's good for uh, hmm. preserving uh, specimens and hmm. biology labs, stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> Embalming. <laughs> Just yeah, ask yeah. Doctor Doctor Godsell. Is his name? Yeah. 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 Also, also, the product you know we we use personal care products, so we use antibacterial soap. So if you buy antibacterial soap that has the ingredients triclosan mm -hmm. in it. Uh, when you combine it with chlorinated water, it becomes carcinogen. Oh boy. Now, I, I would advise John to check what he's using upstairs, yeah. because and, uh, and I just checked it. It has triclosan. Yeah. Uh, from now, I wouldn't use it. Well, at, at our age, you know, but the, it has an effect <coughs> on the kids that are growing up. Yeah. Because their body is just developing. You know, a, a baby is born with a, over 160 type of toxic chemicals in their body already. Yeah. They, they have adult diseases. And, and yet they, you know, the problem we have at the district is that they want us to remove all of these toxic chemicals at the back end. And, and it costs a fortune. Uh, 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 Al was saying about uh, carbon filters. We would have to have a ton of carbon filters to remove yeah, everything. We don't have enough money for carbon filters. We don't have enough money. So <laughs> why do we spend all this money at the back end when we should be talking about prevention no. at the at front the end? Mm -hmm. front end. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's let's 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 uh, well, let's have a, a, a one day of the week no one washes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the commissioner years ago wasn't there a problem when detergents yes. came uh, on the market detergents. and they had to be reformulated. It must have been a good story about how the companies that were making detergents yeah, were compelled the, to reformulate. That was the phosphate form. Uh, yes, that yeah. they That's had, right. And, and the double, phosphate double early fifties, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot and of uh, yeah. plants and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah. in general, uh, it what t phosphates were not that toxic, which was the pro on it, but it also did a good job of cleaning. But right. the fact is, it would pollute the water. Break down. And, uh, yeah, dissolve oxygen. Can, reduce yeah. dissolve oxygen. Right. Yeah. Right. Can water. every can everybody say biodegradable? Well, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's uh -huh. the problem. They had a little yeah, yeah, trouble and, and, yeah. reformulating the soap to right. eliminate the phosphate, mm. and they had a little. They couldn't get the soap uh, clothes as clean and all this other mm. stuff. So it was a while before they got something. But now you look at the chemical formulation of soap. You know, if you go get bar soap, you got uh, uh, coconut, uh, and you got uh, pomade and all these other things. These are uh, natural chemical, uh, natural products that came in and they're reformulated for soap and they dissolve and most of them are biodegradable. Uh, most uh, tallow weight. This is basically mm. they take tallow and they f put uh, caustic in there. Or and, and they pump uh, oxygen or something in there to make it 99. Oh, that, oh, that was a funny story, but that's yeah. soap. Uh, <laughs> well, you know <laughs> what? I, I don't like replacing my bar soap every three or four years. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, so, yeah. well, I've got to tell you one thing when I was in the fire alarm. One of the things we were always cautioned was if there was any type of large gasoline spill. Yeah. Notify the sanitary district. Yeah, right. yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because it comes into the system. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and we're out at every major accident, they call us. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, and so, uh, because that's what we do. We, we uh, handle all the uh, waste that comes into the system yeah. here at Cook County. And so the, the big thing was, well, how much is a lot? You know, uh, two, uh, two cars right. crash. 
obviously we have a <laughs> tanker truck yeah. or something. Mm. No. Let me, but I'm just thinking. Let me tell you another or, story. Or about you had the fire boat go Just to quickly, work. I, I heard the story about the fellow who took a bath every Saturday night, whether yeah. he needed it or not. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, but anyways, the, the, the st what the uh, what the problem with the soap is, they put in glycerin, and so yeah. which makes it softer, which a lot of they they broadcast it's nicer and everything else, but glycerin also dissolves the soap faster. So consequently, like, uh, all right, I worked for Dial Soap mm. for a while, and somebody discovered that they could make more money by putting glycerin in the soap <laughs> than selling glycerin as a byproduct. Mm -hmm. mm. And they also advertise it as making it more milder and everything yeah. else, and consequently, the soap faster. also yeah. dissolved faster. Yeah. Yeah. So the other thing it's is, why do you yeah, need, why do you need perfume and soap? You know. Yeah, but anyways, we got to go back to Fels Naphtha or something. Yeah, like right. That. Ah. But yeah. but uh, per perfume is bad too. Yeah. Because yeah. most of the synthetic perfume will have effect on, on our health. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and 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 I I like what John said, and what Kent said about uh, your friend taking a bath once <laughs> a week. <laughs> and, and Ken says, uh, uh, stop, yeah, stop, uh, and, and because we have to reduce, you know, in the army, you guys were in the army, how long did it take us to take a shower and we had to get out? Five minutes. Right? Five, five minutes. minutes, minutes, minutes. 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 I, I think that's, we have to change our lifestyle, and, and maybe we should do well, like Jazz friend, maybe once a week or every two weeks we take a bath if he needs it or not. Not necessarily yeah. a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Just a oh. fellow of whom oh. I heard. Oh. <laughs> Here's the other problem is they come out with antiperspirants yeah. and yeah. Deter uh, well, deodorants. Yeah. Deodorants yeah. you don't need if you take a sh uh, if you take a bath or a shower, yeah. even if you don't use much soap, yeah. it'll wash off almost all the stuff because it's formed by bacteria on your skin. Right. And if you rinse off your arms and stuff like that, change your clothes, most of that disappears. You don't really need a scrubbing per se, yeah. unless you work in a uh, auto shop or something like that, you get all, grease all over you. Yeah. Folks, this is the personal hygiene hour. <laughs> hope you're enjoying our show, and uh. and uh, this is one way to conserve the water. We're talking about uh, ways to conserve our water, and the hygiene is maybe one of the most efficient ways to conserve our water. Well, yeah, yeah. but any perspirants hmm. you don't need in general, or any uh, deodorants you don't need. Either. That's strictly people. Uh, on a publicity campaign to sell another product for mm -hmm. you know what does it a lot of times antiperspirants particularly will uh, clog up your pores create redness and all well, we perspire for a reason to yeah. cool the body for one isn't it you right. also get rid of the generally, 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 generally yes and sometimes those antiperspirants cause cancer yeah mm -hmm. product, uh, now wow. quickly, them. quickly let's go around the table again starting here with our guests Frank we're going to introduce ourselves so everyone in radio land can well, recognize yeah, yeah. our voices again <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, uh, my name is uh, Commissioner Frank Avila. I'm an elected official at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, and I've been uh, in the uh, office since 2002, and I'm going to run again in March of 2014. Yes, ma'am. My name is Sherry Avila, and I am a docent or a tour guide at the Irish American Heritage Center. And I've been involved at the Irish American Heritage Center for over 10 years. And I invite you to come over and tour the Irish American Heritage Center, 86,000 86, square feet to tour. Uh, also, I am a uh, Chicago Access Network TV producer, if you'd like to be on our TV show. Case. I'm Rich Lang, your announcer. I've taught some uh, modern American and European history. I'm involved in local history. I'm involved in a group that does old-time radio shows. Next case. Very good. Oh, Ken Little, I just retired from Wright College, 21 years of teaching Chicago history, and but I'm still looking to, uh, you know. Irritate you know, people? Oh. Yeah, irritate people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, more than that you've irritated me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, to do, uh, to meet and greet, shall we say. And I'd love to be on your, uh, uh, you know, TV show, but I don't know if they have anything to contribute. And I'm John Escachoco, and I uh, previously uh, worked with uh, our, our uh, impresario, John DeVita, at uh, the old WJJG radio, and enjoyed doing that. And I do lecturing on history and also portray historical figures, such uh -huh. as Abraham Lincoln and Ooh. FDR. And How much of Marie Antoinette? Oh, that's really... No, I don't... I don't <laughs> I'm, I'm a great admirer of the French monarchy, but I don't, I don't portray <laughs> Marie Antoinette. I'm How definitely a royalist. How, yeah. How about Obama? No. <laughs> John do an FDR. Uh. Well, I just want to say <laughs> that it is a great pleasure to be here for the dedication of this lock 
on the Chicago Sanitary District, <laughs> this great institution serving the city of Chicago and points beyond. <laughs> We've got to have a duel between you and R.J. Lindsay, who's got a... There's a lot John, of recreation. Oh, John knows, oh, Fowler, John knows you? Lincoln real yeah. well. He got it before he got killed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. He came, he came here in 1937 to dedicate the, uh, the, the bend in the expressway, right. yeah. the, yeah. uh, the uh, Michigan yeah. Avenue, the, uh, the outer drive, the I should drive. say. The yeah. outer drive. Yeah. Yeah. I think he spoke yeah. on yeah. neutrality that's then. That's yeah. Right. yeah, he gave mm -hmm. his quarantine on aggression. Yeah. Right. Yeah. His, his first public statement here in Chicago hostile to the Nazis and what was going on in Europe, and he got a great deal of flack for it, a great mm -hmm. deal of criticism mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the isolationists. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Next one. Yeah, uh, he, he came in here to dedicate the Z, or the S-curve. The S-curve, yeah. It's actually more of a Z-curve, yeah. but that's beside the point. That's My name is Al Opitz. Uh, I, I'm uh, president of the Austin Community Council. I'm a student at Ken. And I'm a general pain in the butt. But uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's honest too. He did. You see that? You got to be a general. I didn't know that. Uh, <laughs> well, we got a question. Uh, very, uh, my mind is very. I think it's pertinent to what we're talking about. What is this deep tunnel, or the you know, the, what, what is that? That. Oh, that's still not done. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I was asking the commissioner here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know, e everyone talks about the deep tunnel. Well. And and the deep tunnel is completed. Uh, it runs 109 Ooh. miles underground. Uh, maybe 200 to 300 feet below the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, the diameter is uh, 9 feet to about 30 feet in diameter. And uh, the purpose of it was for uh, pollution. And, 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 and uh, it, it mm. stores uh, any, uh, on a combined sewer when it floods, it will it'll store up to 2.3 billion gallons. And, you know, you guys ever heard of the first flush? Okay. And, you know, uh, when it rains, and, and all that water is going into all the local sewers and our interceptor sewers, then it's all running and a lot of force and it comes and, and if, if it's the intense rain and so much rain that all the systems cannot hold it, it drops down into the tunnel. And, yeah. and they're complaining that when we open up the locks or the gate, uh, most of the poop is going to Lake Michigan. But we call it the first flush. Uh, uh, you guys have a first flush too, right? Uh, when you poop, and you flush, that's the first flush because most of your poop goes down the toilet. Well, our first flush is similar, the same way. When all that water comes rushing in our system, it carries all of that poop into our sewage treatment plant. So our first flush is similar to your first flush. That it goes into our sewage treatment plant. So after that, it's predominantly storm water with a little uh, poop in it. Yeah. I've got a question. I've, yeah. I've always I've heard that the deep tunnel has a capacity of 2.3 like billion. Point three, but yeah. All right, when there's when there's a major storm, yes, and the deep tunnel is full, Phil, yes. Then w when the storm passes, what do you do with? Does that water pumped out yeah. again? Is no, there we, a way we, of pumping we, it back oh, oh, yes. into the system? We'll we'll pump it back into our wastewater plant. Gradually, okay. you're able yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So so in <coughs> normal times, is the deep tunnel empty? I mean, uh, it, it, it's still uh, 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 maybe up or to twenty percent of water. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, ordinarily yeah. it would be basically empty, and it's there waiting for well, a storm. Yeah, I, I don't mean 100% yeah, 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 empty, yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. but just a, a Wait, nominal yeah, amount of water, right. so that if there is a storm, you have this huge capacity right. to, to absorb. Mm -hmm. and, and 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 before we know that storm coming in, uh, if we know a storm is coming in like Wednesday, Monday, what we'll do is that we'll start preparing ourselves, and we'll lower the level of the water in our channel. Ah, we'll lower okay. the level of water so in our channel. Capacity so, there. so yeah, and and also we'll uh, start opening up the lock at Lockport. The maximum flow that we have in Lockport uh, uh, is twenty thousand cubic feet per second. Wow. See, uh, wow. what what that is that thirteen thousand million gallons of water going through. Wow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 13,000 million gallons. 13 Please. billion gallons. Mil million gallons. Yeah. 13 and that's per what? Per? per uh, that's a cubic feet per second. That, that's so that's day. 13 million gallons yeah. per second. Yeah, uh, wow. per, per, no, that, uh, that's converted to day. <coughs> we're, we're, uh -huh. we're converting per day now. Per day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, we cannot increase that 20,000 CFS because if we increase it, the water will back up. Hmm. You know, it, it's like you're going down the five lane highway mm -hmm. and then you're nearing down the three lane, all your cars will back up. Same way it happens out of Lockport. So if we go over that, the water will back up and we'll start having trouble in our other locks. 
do they still, I, at one point I was told that uh, groups could take tours where they would take you down and show you the deep uh, tunnel. Is that still true or is that oh, no, we no? We went no, on no. a tour no. before mm. it was completed. Yeah, that's what I And thinking. we had to wear a hard hat, a raincoat, mm. and there was a whole train down there. Oh. <laughs> a train? Yeah, and the train took us from one end to the other or to on tracks? A, yes, yeah, a, tra a train on tracks. And at that time, <laughs> they yeah. took, they, I don't know whether there was another way to get down there, but I vividly remember taking a birdcage down there. <laughs> but if you're saying, you sound as though you can't do that anymore? No, I can't, no, because it's light. It's, uh, it's yeah. light. Oh, so you, no longer, you can no longer go down and no, see no. the, so but that was only when it was under construction. Right, oh, but, but, but your audience could go and, and give, uh, we'll give tours at our quarries. Well, uh, yes. we have the Thorn Quarry, I, I took Sherry and, and John Joyce, uh, uh, a couple weeks ago with two bus loads uh, about uh, to over 100 people and we went down in the quarry about 300 feet down in the quarry explaining them what we're doing at at the Thornton quarry very and then we took them into the uh, pumping station explained to them there very good tour uh, 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 a anyone that wants to take a tour with us uh, give us a call and we'll arrange a tour I highly mm. recommend that tour I went on that tour with Frank mm. and it's mm. quite an experience I must say yeah, th yeah this is you know we have the best tour I mean this is a different type of tour this is a, an environmental type of tour that very few of our people go on and and I would encourage any uh, audience that like to listen to John DeVito and listen to him that I uh, give me a call say uh, I'm okay. one of John's fans That's what is your phone number when they, what number can they call? Uh, the phone number is 312-751-5620. And uh, we'll set the tour up. The only th requirement we have is that you have to fill out an application and we run it through Homeland Security. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the phone mm. number again is 312-751-5620. Uh, we could set up a tour for you to visit Stickney, the largest plant in the world. And also we could set up a tour seeing the uh, main pumping station up there in uh, McCook and our, uh, one of the quarries. Excellent tour. And it's free, right, Frank? It's no, free. Uh, well, you're tax yeah. You're paying for it. Right? Yeah. That's the well, probably one of the best things no one knows about them. Yeah. Commission, yeah. Commissioner, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You said TARP is not... Well, well, the deep well, tunnel is not complete. No, no, no. TARP is complete. No, no. The deep tunnel is completed. But the but the reservoirs are not completed. That's yeah. what. It was. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. the reservoirs are, are not completed. Once it's all completed, the whole system will hold about 17 billion gallons. Wow. wow. 17 billion gallons, guys. Are, are you work? Are, are they working on it? Because oh yes. Of, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're, we're, we're we're working on it. Uh, we're working on the Thornton Reservoir and the McCook no. Reservoir. Is this all underground? These no, no, open, open. open. These are yeah, above ground. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. Old, I mean, take the tour, guys. They're old quarries that yeah. uh, quarries. They're abandoned. Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. But the, the other thing that if you want to look at uh, where the deep tunnel project is, it go over by Lane Tech. There's a big grate there, and it's hmm. a vent for the uh, deep tunnel. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, right right now we're having this radio station. Uh, what suburb are we having it in? Norwich. Oh. Norwich. Norwich. Norwich, right? And, we'll and, also in and uh, what happened April 18 and 19 at the shopping center there? It got flooded. Got flooded, right? And I remember I was watching on TV or on the web, a guy was out on a canoe out yeah. there, right? Yeah. And then all the people up on Cumberland uh, got uh, uh, flooded out too. Remember uh, for a whole week? Well, that's, yeah, sure. that's, that's, that's yeah. just plain uh, flood. Right, right, yeah. right, just plain flood because uh, uh, don't forget now, our deep tunnel handles the combined sewer overflow. Our deep tunnel does not handle the Displains River. So the Displains River got flooded and went over the banks, mm -hmm. and, and 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 the um, the mm -hmm. discharge uh, where it discharged into uh, the Displains River, the Displains River went above it, so no water could be discharged in the Displains River, and all those uh, sewers still up. back us still have water, and that's why all those people got flooded out in that area. How yeah. come, Commissioner, that they, they don't cover the Displains River? It's in Cook County. Well, I, I know, but right. but we're, we're we only handle the sewers. Do we, you go? Outside oh, don't handle it. No, no, no. You okay. don't handle it, uh, no. Chicago River either because they got flooded out here. Right, because you Park. see, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers is in charge of all the navigable waterways in the United States. So it's the Army Corps responsibility. No. Is the Metropolitan Sanitary, the district, it's not the same as Cook County, is it? Isn't there? No. Doesn't it overlap territory? And, and so it's not, it's not, that's why it's not the Metropolitan Sanitary District of Cook County. No, no, well, it's, it's a it's a separate district, isn't it? That, well, no, that overlaps. Uh, we cover the whole county, uh, 
but remember when Chicago was being built, they called it the Metropolitan Standard District of Greater Chicago. Right. And then as the city grew and your suburb grew, we, we, we covered the whole county. So is all of Cook County in the district? Yes, majority of it. About 98% because you do have a, a, a one or two communities that have their own sanitary That's district. what I'm saying. It's not, exa it's not uh, identical uh, to Cook close County. But close to it. Another suburb, too, uh, Commissioner, was uh, Westchester. Oh, Westchester, oh, yes. Yes, yes, because yes. one of the, the buildings that I served was doing telephone work is right on uh, uh, Roosevelt and Mannheim. Yes. And they had water down in their offices down there that was up um, up to my chest. Oh, yeah, and, oh. and, and the trouble with Westchester, they have two streams in Westchester. Mm -hmm. and, and they got all, they got f overflowed, the streams got was flooded. The we yes, we went to, uh, we, we, we attended a hearing and people were complaining. So, I had a question too. You say, reservoir is that the, uh, is that the places that the Indians live where they have the casinos now? <laughs> oh. Well, that would raise uh, a lot da, of da, 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 da. <laughs> <laughs> no, When you say though, there, there's uh, there are some reservoirs. And there's one you say McCook. Yeah. Is that the old quarry you see from First Avenue or what? Um, we're uh, uh, digging out the quarry. Yeah. There. I mean, uh, uh, it, uh, we wish we would have bought the quarry. It'd be a lot faster, but we're. We're I know, digging I know, out. There's a lot of work going on over there. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Oh, the old quarries were. They built a lot of houses in uh, downtown and uh, buildings, and everything else out of those quarry stone. And the other thing they do too is gravel came out of that, so you yes. had a lot of roads and everything else built yeah. out of it. And then you have the tailings, which it's got the consistency of sand, but it's more compactable. Well, the one thing about the quarries is you can't take them for granted. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> On that note, let me interrupt <laughs> <laughs> again and say we once can't again interrupt that. the proceedings yeah, for some on, messages of interest and, and importance. Check. Hey friends, how are the tires on your vehicle? Do you need motor oil or transmission fluid or power steering fluid or antifreeze? How about the wiper blades? Are they in good condition? Is the washer fluid in your tank full? How good is your battery? Do you need to replace light bulbs? Well, the place to pick up all these items is at Berkeley Auto Supply at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley, Illinois. Stop in and see Tom, and he'll get you any part or supply you might need for your vehicle. Tom at Berkeley Auto Supply has everything you need for your vehicle. He has every tool, part, and supply you might need from the front bumper to the rear bumper, from the top of the roof to the bottom of the chassis. You can call Tom at area code 708-544-8350. And they are located at 5237 St. Charles Road in Berkeley. Tom's hours are Monday to Friday from 8 in the morning until 8 o'clock at night, Saturdays, from 8 in the morning until 6 o'clock in the evening, and he's even open on Sundays from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's Berkeley Auto Supply, 5237 St. Charles Road. He is just east of Wolf Road and west of Mannheim Road, about two miles, and he's on the south side of the street. Call area code 708 Five four four eight three five zero for parts, tools, and supplies. It's Berkeley Auto Supply, fifty two thirty seven St. Charles Road in Berkeley, Illinois seven zero eight five four four eight three five zero. Now back to our show. Jack, here I am. Here I am. Jack. Well, final segment. Final segment, folks. Hang in there. We're in the. We're not at the home stretch yet, but we're at least we're on the far turn. And we're going to have to remind everyone. Here we are. To my right, Al Opitz. Hello, Al. Hello. 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 Since the last time. Hello. <laughs> Next up, John S. Kachulko. 
And fan are you, are you fan of be, Edward L. Norton. Uh, are, you, are you going south shortly? Can I ride uh, part I'm, way with you? I'm, no, you know, unfortunately, I have to go north. He always tells me that. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, right. no. I, I asked for his phone number. He said it's 555 number. Yeah. yeah. Okay. No such number. Yeah. I'm so okay, that's right. Ordinarily, I would. I can't. I know you would. Yeah. No, well, I'll, I'll drive you to the closest bus uh, stop. Okay. North yeah. Avenue is fine. Yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, no, yeah. I, oh, I'm not going that oh, way. Oh, so. okay. No. <laughs> I'm going to say what bus? Yeah, what okay. bus? Uh, and John is... Uh, Former town trustee and assessor in Cicero, former yeah. state representative and public speaker. I forgot to say, what, what were you, uh, uh, L? Me? It's just... Uh, uh, what well, was I? Uh, <laughs> President of the Austin Urban Community Council, and uh, I led three lives. Yeah, led three yeah lives. right. <laughs> yeah. Remember? Yeah. Uh, public citizen, uh, what's going to call it? Communist and a double thing for the FBI. Yeah. I, yeah. Herbert A. Philbrick, That's right. for yeah. nine frightening years. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind, folks. It's been almost. Your I was a communist yeah. for the FBI. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Right. I, and his wife didn't like him in any of the three boats. I don't think. Yeah, but they uh, <laughs> finally they, the guy he was his contact. He was the guy who was the he was the Hills brother Hills brothers coffee broker. Remember? Oh, the Larry commercials. Oh, <laughs> John Zaremba. Who is it? John Zaremba. You know the name? The coffee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I had to turn them over to a coffee broker, and <laughs> yeah. he sold them to somebody yeah. else. Yeah. <laughs> That's the same guy. It was his contact. It was oh. Richard Carlson in that series from the early fifties. Right. You guys so. are you're you're pretty good. You yeah. remember? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay. Uh, next up, and of course, uh, um, you you had the uh, Ken Little Chicago. And, uh, Ken Little. Taught Chicago history at Wright College. In fact, I was talking with John. Uh, been, I have over the years given many bus tours of uh, various communities in Chicago. I got a couple of really nice ones, but marketing is, and I'm not even looking to make any money, you know. Well, but uh, A you lot know. of people don't stop and think of it. I mean, like all the history that's here. Now, com coming up First Avenue at about, I don't know, was it 20, 24th? There used to be Edward Don Company was right oh. there. Remember Edward Don Restaurant Supply Company? Sure. Well, for years they were in Chinatown, right off where the expressway was. Yeah, now were. it's all level; they're all gone. Yeah, that was a Chicago firm. They had an interesting. Someone yeah. told me the uh, story behind that. Edward Don was returning from Europe, World War One, on board a ship. Gets in a big card game or crap game, which it is. But yeah. he had thousands, thousands of dollars. They won. They actually put him in the brig with his money for his own safety. Uh, <laughs> no, he kidding. found the company with that. Yeah. So now that's gone. One of one of the things I do. Um, in fact, I've just sort of solidified it start in Norwood Park and just, you know, go to uh, all the small little communities around there, mm -hmm. uh, Jefferson Park, Mayfair. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we stop at, a, at a, a, a factory at Lynch and Elston. It's called R.J. Owens. Does anybody know anything at all about them? One day of the year, their product is known worldwide. New Year's Day? Or? They make the Oscars. Ah, oh, oh, oh made, I made, made here yeah. in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. I knew yeah. a man who did business with them. He was yeah. in, he was a he uh, handled plaques and trophies. Yeah, and he did business with that company. Yeah, and they, anybody can do business if you want to have a plaque made, etc. But that's that's their specialty. That's right here in Chicago. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, well, yeah. it's a, much of a secret too how they make it, although it's uh, generally known that they cast the statue, polish it up. Uh, plate it and all this other stuff. Yeah, but, uh, they might do it in a couple of uh, different locations too. I don't know, but uh, that's uh, you know that's just uh, one of the you know things. Uh, well, Jeanette, our regular our panelist, Jeanette Frontier, who we couldn't be here today. Her son has the candy company that makes the special candies for the Oscar awards. <coughs> Is that right? Yeah. 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 What special candies yeah. are those? I yeah. What special candies are I don't care what the name. I'll have Mars. to go look that the up. Story <laughs> Mars? <is> that, <laughs> no. The story is that one of the one of the f actresses of the very early 1930s, right at the exception <coughs> of the Academy Awards, looked at the statue and said, that oh, yeah. looks like my Uncle Oscar. Yeah, something like that. Right? That's, oh. that's the story of how it got the name, yeah, the Oscar. Oscar. Technically, it's the Academy Award. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. Oscar. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, looks well, like my Bowl. Uncle Oscar. The Super Bowl for the first three or four years was the World Championship of Professional Football. Oh. And it was... Um, uh, Hank, uh, not Hank Stram, uh, Lamar Hunt, the owner of the Kansas City uh, Chiefs, Chiefs, who played in the first Super Bowl against Green Bay, he says uh, his kid, his daughter, his son, his daughter got a Super Bowl. Yeah. He says, look, Super Bowl, we're having a Super Bowl. So that's stuck. Uh, and next up. Your, your announcer, Rich Lang, 
-hmm. Lately, I've been involved in leading several reminiscence discussions among seniors at a place like Mathers, the senior center in mm -hmm. Chicago. Not so much to go back to the past and escape the present, but I think reminiscing. That's not a bad idea. Which is, <laughs> uh, could go back in time. But I think reminiscing is a good way to exercise your mind in the sense where you recollect these names and these places that you're familiar with as a child. Oftentimes these memories escape you. Sure. I try to help bring them back. And then we can compare the Isn't past with the present. sometimes what you can remember from years ago? When you're yes. You know, I can't yeah. remember what my wife said this morning. Of course, that's like... That's, a, that's <laughs> a sign of age, Jack. <laughs> yeah, you weren't listening yeah, yeah. to her, that's why. Huh? <laughs> yeah, huh? Selective hearing. Yeah. And we have our guest, uh, ma'am. I'm Sherry Avila. And I am a docent or tour guide at the Irish American Heritage Center. An educated tour guide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, tra the, our tour guides are trained, uh, and we offer tours uh, throughout the week, throughout the day. Uh, we've had groups of tours come in from all areas of Chicago and all suburbs. So don't think if you're just from one particular area or whatever, you're not welcome. Everybody is welcome at the Irish American Heritage Center. 86,000 square feet. We have a huge library, which we now have a, a relatively new uh, librarian in charge of. So she can help you find almost anything you want to know about the Irish culture, literally. We have a genealogy section, we have, it's multimedia, we have magazines, we have uh, audio tapes and DVDs and the whole nine yards. Uh, and we have once a month an Irish book discussion, uh, usually on a Sunday, though we may change that day. And that's facilitated by Virginia Gibbons from Oakton Community College. and. Uh, we also have uh, a lot of music and dancing. My husband uh, does the Kaylee dancing, or the uh, I actually do it with him too. Uh, the Kaylee or Irish dancing, we do it every Tuesday night, uh, 7.30 uh, to 9.30. Uh, and, and if I'm not there, I'm at the Celtic Women, <laughs> <laughs> which is at once a month on, at 7.00. And on Thursday nights, we have Irish Heritage Singers. So if anybody wants to join the Irish Heritage Singers and sing, we have four-part harmony, men and women. Uh, and we don't just sing at the Irish Center. We have sung in Ireland. <laughs> we had, went to an international choral festival there. And we have sung. We, in fact, we'll be singing at the Milwaukee Irish Fest in August. Mm -hmm. And uh, also we've sung at the Peoria Irish Fest and in almost any Irish Fest around we've sung there. But in addition, we've also sung, recently we sang at the uh, Resurrection Hospital in honor of Father O'Brien, who uh, 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 was spent many years as a priest. And uh, so we're, we're available all over the place for uh uh, not to interrupt you, do you know where the term all whole nine yards what? comes from? Pa pardon? Do you, do you know where the term all the whole nine yards comes from? Football. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, where? It was the length of the machine gun belts hmm. oh. when they were shooting. Oh. Is that right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Is that right? Well, yeah. Seven feet. The airborne machine yeah. gun. Wow. When they would load the P-38s and P-47s. Wow. There was 27 feet of bullets, mm -hmm. and so you would have shot the whole nine yards. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, that is interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah uh, but we end. also have an Irish Fest coming up in July, July 13th, 14th, and 15th, and uh, usually we bring in almost 3,000 people. We do have parking lot, huge two parking lots that are attached to the building, uh, and we also offer services where we bring people to and from. Uh, uh, their cars to help them out with that. Uh, and uh, at the Irish Fest, the Irish singers will be singing, as well as many well-known Irish bands uh, and other entertainment. We have lots of stuff for the kids at the Irish Fest, if anybody has a child or a grandchild that want you want to bring over to have a little fun. <laughs> They do all Get kinds of fun ages. things. Yeah, he's got to yeah. find it first. There's all my grandchildren right here. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. You're all about July Fest. Sherry, I wanted to ask you: Would you know if at any time in the past there was this even a s very small neighborhood of? 
Protestant Irish, Northern Irish, that settled among themselves in the city? Yes, uh, well, actually, I am from the Northern Ireland, Very technically. Good. Okay. okay. <laughs> And uh, there definitely is a Northern Ireland section, although I also found out when I was dealing with Ancestry.com that it looks as though one of my ancestors was in Barbados as an Irish slave, or indentured slave, I should say. Do you have an idea where this neighborhood would be? I suppose it's so diffuse now, it really doesn't have a strong identity. No, I I don't know. Okay, that'll be worth researching. But uh, it's... There is so much conflict though with that because mm. I was actually uh, with the art gallery one time had a, a um, uh, exhibit on the conflict of Northern and Southern Ireland, mm. and uh, people were coming in. They got so hostile <laughs> that oh. I I felt uncomfortable with the yeah. hostility that I was witnessing uh, during oh, that experience. Sure, but sure. then lately we had some people that came in from Derry, which is one of the uh, towns in Northern Ireland, mm-hmm. and they're trying to promote tourism. And um, he was saying that they're trying to, it's the Americans <laughs> that are, <laughs> mm. <laughs> the Irish Americans that are continuing this yeah. war, yeah. whereas yeah. the American, the point. Irish in Ireland are trying to resolve yes. this. So I job. thought that was really yeah. interesting. Yeah. 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 The same thing, St. Patrick's Day Parade actually started here in the States yeah. and <laughs> went back to Ireland, mm-hmm. rather than starting in Ireland. No. Yeah, no. actually, the, I, the and the St. Patrick's Parade is also in Canada. The other thing about that is the diaspora. A lot of people think the Irish only went to Canada, USA. Australia. And some people might know about Australia and New Zealand, but how many of you know about Brazil and Argentina or South Africa? They were escaped. So <laughs> And, uh, of course, they did go try to go to countries where they were Catholic, so they did go to Spain, hmm. and they did go to Italy. Uh, there so was there was a leader of when the, when the uh, in, in South America when they were fighting to to oh. overthrow the rule of Spain in the 19th century, Bernardo O'Higgins. Higgins. Yeah. O'Higgins was one of the great leaders yes. of the the armies yeah. that were fighting for independence. Yes. Mexico the same way. Obregon is O'Brien. He was right. the president of Mexico. Yeah. Fox is uh, Vicente uh, Fox. Yes, yes. Yeah, so yeah. so there I, I never realized the Irish like politics so much. Oh. <laughs> but Pete's working. <laughs> I, had a cha- I met Vicente Fox. He, he visited Cicero yeah. when he was president of Mexico. Uh, was he entirely yeah. Irish or just partly Irish? Uh, Descendants. Pro- probably, I would imagine there was probably a mixture. Right. Yeah. 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 But, but his family originally came, 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 came from Fox. Ireland. Yeah. Now, to, 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 to complete the circle, sure. I'm a Ryan. The first Ryan was a Spaniard. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, the Burks were actually from Italy, and they uh, changed their name when they went to Ireland. Who? The Burks. Burke, huh? So they're mm-hmm. not really true Irish. Well, you That's have the easy. Irish uh, Amon de, v- de Valera, yeah, they, yeah, president right. of Ireland. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Spanish, Spanish from the time of the Spanish Armada, I believe. Yeah. was one of the sailors that washed ashore. Yeah, washed Spanish ashore. Armada. Someone yeah. settled that, there. That's where the black-headed Irish came from. Yeah. But there were, my dad was black till he went silver, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's oh, black true. Black hair, you know what I mean. That's true. But, you know, fair, fair as can be, but black hair. Or yeah. Right, Ken? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. He likes Snow White. So well, you. one of my neighbors was, was out Actually. out uh, playing ball one day or something, and uh, and uh, they, they, they what, what the hell did they call him? I forget. Casey or something like that. And my dad says, he's as black as the rest of them. You know, he's not a Casey. Well, he was. Yeah. He was Irish, you know, but uh, he had no, that no, uh, jet black hair. Wait, I just want to say one other thing, that... One of the things I was looking for in Ireland were redheads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? There weren't that many redheads no. in Ireland. Sounds like a stereotype. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have a confession to make. They call you red ever? Oh, yeah. They, they call, call me, me Carrot that. Top. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, my hair comes from my uh, maternal grandmother, who they came from Austria. So. Oh, you yeah. should you should have given it back to her. I mean, she looked terrible, Bob. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> I, I would have hated when I was a little kid. The women would go, "Oh, look at this!" <laughs> when my dad said I pulled the head down, I said, "When I grew up, I would cut off all my curls and dye my hair black." <laughs> well, some I, I actually thought to myself, "Was I one of those aliens from outer space?" <laughs> We haven't introduced one person yet. Yeah, we do. Uh, thank you very much. I, I just like to mention. Uh, this is, uh, uh, what is your name, sir? Uh, my name is Commissioner Frank Avila, yeah. and I just like to mention about Sherry on that uh, Irish Fest, July 13th, 14th, 15th here in Chicago. That they, the Irish, will have excellent Irish food. The liquid food that they have is terrific. 
what you won't find any of that food <laughs> any Irish other place yeah, that liquid Irish. food all over the place. <laughs> it's I, it's an I, Irish seven course meal. Yeah, Irish seven. Yeah, and then buy a potato and a six yeah. pack. And then uh, we always know when the Irish fest is on because all that uh, poop and pee is coming through, <laughs> flowing <laughs> into our planes. We should yeah. have started being counting a number of times. I'm going to say that. <laughs> and then yeah. and then also uh, adding uh, also <laughs> also uh, we 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 know when the Super Bowl game is on. Oh yeah, oh, okay. or or, or oh, taste sure. taste of Chicago. Oh know, sure, uh, one million people. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it, uh, we're, it, we're flowing. Uh, oh yeah, I mean, all of a sudden you have a million flushes. Uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah. I remember reading about this in, in in the 1950s in England. There was yeah. a very popular series called Coronation Street. It was a sitcom. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it was so popular that I remember the authorities saying the same thing. When there would be a commercial break, I think it was on yeah, Sunday yeah, night, yeah, yes, yeah. the water level would right, drop right, right, and the whole right. London w water well, system because of and everyone they, yeah. using yeah. They had one here in Chicago when Jim Moran's movie would be on or something. <laughs> <laughs> they said the water crib could tell yeah, the difference. Yeah, you know, yeah. so. Well, well the, other, the other thing was if you want to go to emergency room, always go during the uh, <laughs> Super Bowl game because nobody goes until after the, the next day. <laughs> well, I know I'd, I'd be working days, you know, Super Bowl or whatever World Series, and the phones wouldn't ring, and all of a sudden, you know, the uh, halftime come or a big commercial, and all, all of a sudden the phones start ringing. <laughs> Along those same they, lines, they I was on the police department for 34 years, and when the Bears won their big Super Bowl in '86, following the '85 series season. Um, from that whole day, from Saturday through like Monday, they had like three arrestees go through the lockup at 51st, <laughs> which included all like the South Side female yeah. members also. Some yeah. people were busy with other yeah. things. Quick story, play play off something you said a little bit earlier. There was a, there was a great little vignette on on the the uh, the Miss U the Miss Miss USA pageant last oh, yeah. night. Yeah. There in the 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 oh, MC, Miss this Miss little Miss fellow who was the MC, yeah. introduces Donald Trump. The, well, of course, is the is the the, the major dome of the whole thing. He puts yeah, the whole yeah. thing oh, on, oh, and he says, "Now I'd like to introduce one of the most important men here this evening, Donald Trump." Uh. Trump comes up and says, "What do you mean, one of the most important?" <laughs> <laughs> here this no, no, who, who won the uh, Miss USA? Miss Connecticut. Miss, Miss Connecticut. Connecticut. Miss yeah. Illinois was the third runner-up. Oh, third runner-up. Oh, cool. Oh, third oh. runner-up. I think Miss. I believe Miss Alabama was the second oh, girl. Yeah. She was the she or the first runner up. The first runner up was Miss Alabama. Oh, one of the girls from Iowa had uh, arm missing. Oh, wow. And arm missing. I don't know how she, how she no. plays. Well, it's supposed to be on your abilities and your intelligence. Yeah, yeah. It's not supposed to be. Well, I don't know what the I don't know what the story is well, on it, but uh, yeah, yeah, that is interesting. But they they did they showed it on uh, various news clips, but they didn't show the arm missing. They just no. went up to the. I see. Yeah. 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 And then it showed missing arm either, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what she did in the, in the pageant. She was now, now. She wasn't one of the, the 15 finalists. They had I, had a, I had a question back to our back to our topic of the sanitation. Sure. Yeah. Is, um, is it like all, all throughout the world, do, do metropolitan areas have similar situations or similar establishments? Because I know I heard discussion at a radio program years ago it was thought that the uh, Potomac was polluted because of industrial pollution, but it wasn't industrial, it was sewerage. So during Johnson's administration, a series of yes. districts were up and down the Potomac, and the yeah. Potomac cleaned up. Yeah, what about New York that? City? I mean, do you know, for example, what New York City, what their system Well, there was a similar system, like, uh, you know, uh, under the Clean Water Act, there was a uh, uh, pass in, what, 1972 that uh, was mandated for all the cities to uh, improve their, uh, how they treat wastewater, mm -hmm. to improve the quality of the water. So it was mandated by the uh, Clean Water Act. Hmm. So you'll find that most of your major uh, uh, cities will have a wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and you mentioned throughout the world, well, your your uh, poor country probably will not have a Anything. wastewater plant because they don't have the sewer system set up. Well, like like in China, uh, uh, oh. they'll they'll uh, poop and they'll bring it outside and they'll compost it. Yeah. You know, yeah. a lot of people sick. And, and and also you know in German and the Germans uh, and uh, in your new development in Europe is that they'll separate your pee from your poop. They'll treat the pee separately from the poop because right. most of the pharmaceutical drugs, seventy five percent of it is in the pee. Right. Oh, okay. So it's it, it's less expensive to treat it in the pee. And and and, and don't forget, guys, pee is good for fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what's the other name for pee? <laughs> except except <laughs> for uh, evergreens. Yeah. There's, if there's a, 
<laughs> if you're an American in the kitchen, what are you in the bathroom? European? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a John, with a great John Wayne Civil War yeah, film yeah. called The Horse Soldiers, the horse, yeah. in which William Holden plays yeah. the, the, the regimental yeah. physician. Yeah. And he gets into an argument with one of the colonels yeah. in the unit, and he they have to settle this argument yeah. with John Wayne, who's yeah. the overall commander. And Holden says, he says, he says, I'm trying to explain to the colonel that the coffee will taste better if you dig the latrines downstream. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's cute. That's good. And, and, and so, so, in, 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 uh, there's one country that is becoming all vegan, all organic, because they're separating their pee. They're letting it sit for two weeks, and they're using that for the fertilizer. And your poop, they're composting their poop. Uh, I forgot what country that is, but that's the first country that has organic farming because they separate. Uh, unfortunately, we're so. Uh, high in our technology, and our city is so old that we have combined swords. But if we could separate the pee from the poop, uh, it'd be excellent, uh, excellent for you know, our our uh, uh, fertilizer, our, our our vegetation. Well, the, nor the northern European countries still have a little problem with sanitation because a lot of times they don't they recommend you don't drink the water. <laughs> you got a lot of bottled water there. Scandinavia. No, Eastern European. What yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. We were in Russia, and uh, yeah. we couldn't drink the water there at all. Yeah. Well, mm. vodka, you drink vodka. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the only thing is, when you go to Russia, they always tell you to please talk into the chandelier. <laughs> 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 well, I know, actually. <laughs> no, no, no. In, in Russia, it appears that they don't take bath for a month. Oh. Well, at yeah. least the time we were there. Maybe since I mean, you go on the bus, and uh, the odor in the bus was... Uh, I mean, uh, you the stockyards. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, getting back to the stockyard, uh, uh, that's why the uh, Water Reclamation District got started, the Sanitary District, because of all the stockyards, uh, all, the waste uh, all the waste, they used to butcher the livestock, the dumping in Bubbly Creek, Bubbly Creek, Creek. Bubbly Bubbly Creek. Creek. yeah, yeah. And, and, and so now, after over 100 years, Bubbly Creek is still having a problem with contaminant, with the toxic chemicals, wow. all on the bottom of right. the uh, uh, river. Well, that's not the only place that's got problems, yeah. but that's... I, I mean, if, yeah. But the uh, South Water Purification Plant started because of the South Works of U.S. Steel yeah. because of the fact that it was so polluting that they had, you know, basically at one time Chicago had almost all bottled water because you couldn't drink the water. And the two purification plants came in and cleaned it up because when I was a kid, you always uh, had bottled water. Hmm. In 1956, seven, they were doing that uh, water filtration plant at Navy Pier. Yeah, well, this was yeah. you one at South Plant started, I think, 48 or something like that. I they have less troubles there than they have going downtown, though. Uh, yeah, well, I thought it was actually before the war. What's that? That that South Side uh, filtration plant. No, no? it's actually they were building it during the war. Oh, it stopped okay. because of the war. Yeah, uh -huh. we couldn't drink the water in the Philippines either. Oh, that part I believe, yeah. And uh, th that's how we got started because uh, over 100 years ago they were uh, mm -hmm. dumping everything into the Bubbly Creek and it flew, flowed down into Lake Michigan and the intake cribs were intake for the drinking water was near the shore right. and we used to bring it back to us and drink it. Oh, they had that trouble a couple of years ago. And yeah, and yeah. So, so, so that's that's when we reversed the flow of the Chicago River. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh, the they, had, yeah. they had that trouble up in Michigan a few years ago where they had a scripus Scripposeridium osis got into the water and they were bringing it up and half the city got sick because the uh, intake was so close to the discharge yeah, yeah, of the river yeah. and the farmer's uh, fertilizer for the most part was going downstream. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, uh, they had some problems besides that, but it ended up uh, half the city getting sick. And that's and a serious and problem. And, and that's no. why they built those intake cribs way out in, in the Lake Michigan. Well, that was because they, they ran out of space. For <laughs> 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 they, they were building them further and further out. They were one time fairly close, and then they kept on going and going until they finally got, I guess it's about six miles out now or something like that. Hmm. Do I have no, time not quite that far. Do I have time for a quick story? Sure. It kind of ties in with Harry Truman, as president, was visited by the British ambassador, who was an aristocrat, had a country estate. Harry came from the country, from Missouri. So after dinner, he's sitting in the in the uh, the Oval Office with the with the British ambassador, and they're discussing their 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 land, and they start talking about manure, and Harry is telling him about the manure that they used when he was a kid on his dad's <laughs> farm, and the British ambassador is talking about the manure that they use. And Margaret Truman, you know, his daughter, overhears this and says to, to her mother, Bess, Mom, 
our dad is the president of the United States. Should he be in the Oval Office using the word manure? Couldn't you get him to say fertilizer? <laughs> and and, and Bess yeah. says, Margaret, it took me 30 years to get him to call it manure. <laughs> Harry, yeah, Harry. I give him hell, Harry, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Harry, I was at, uh, oh, in yeah. the Pennsylvania, Missouri. I stopped at his house there. I saw yeah. a very interesting place. Oh, yeah. At 13 doors on the first floor. Oh, yeah. Because of cross ventilation. And uh, yeah. he was a savior. When he died, they had about uh, 1,000 peanut butter jars in the basement. Really? <laughs> peanut butter and jelly yeah. jars. He saved them all. Empty, mm -hmm. you know, Empty ones. Oh, and then uh, the linoleum there. They showed him he used to take linoleum down. Yeah. But he never owned the house anyway. But that was his no, mother-in-law's mother house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this he would you see all the tax on the linoleum where he tacked it down rather than replace the linoleum. Uh, <laughs> you know, in this recent uh, school uh, situation, one of the schools Correct. that was um, uh, sort of spared, they didn't pronounce it right. It's called Manier. Yeah. It's on the near north side, 1420 North Hudson. They're going to send them kids to Jenner, 1009 North Cleveland, and there is no street that goes through. You know, Hudson, Cleveland, Mohawk, none of the streets go through. But anyway, I grew up around there, and we always called the kids that went to manure. <laughs> manure, manure. Oh, gee, gee, uh, yeah. Wait up, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now, that's about time. And now, we'll once again, now, folks. Hold on. here's the guy. Oh. Who started it all? Our producer, chief electrical engineer, and all-round troubleshooter and good guy, John DeVita. John just DeVita. one moment, sir, one moment. We just want to say one thing, remember. I didn't get to say it last time. Remember, folks, history is much more than a book you keep on the shelf. Very good. That's it. You have been listening to Meet the Chicago Historians from the John DeVita Broadcast Center on the Windy City Hometown Entertainment Network on Monday, June 17th, the year 2013. This program was produced and directed by John DeVita, edited by Stephen Lehman. This program was pre-recorded. Thanks for listening. Once again, you have been listening to our monthly program, Meet the Chicago Historians, which was pre-recorded on June the 17th, 2013. Our Historians Show is broadcast over WRHS Jack FM 89.7 Norwich. We thank the management of this station for carrying the show. You can also access our show both today's as well as a back library of older broadcasts on the internet by going to windycityhometown.com. Goodbye, and once again, thanks for listening. This is Rich Lang speaking.